With so many meal kit services out there, it's hard to find the right one for you. Here's what I think sets Home Chef apart. Home Chef offers delicious, exciting meals anyone can cook. Rotating recipe options each week means there's always something new. Once you create your Home Chef account and set your meal preferences, it's as simple as choosing your menus for the future weeks and adjusting your delivery dates. They'll recommend meals based on dietary needs and cook time, such as quick meals, carb-conscious, vegetarian, and even easy cleanup. Your box arrives at your doorstep each week with recipe cards and perfectly portioned ingredients. You get exactly what you need. And if you don't think you have time to cook, they offer quick solutions of 15-minute recipes, microwave meals, and oven-ready options that save you time and effort in the kitchen. For a limited time only, go to homechef.com art19 for $90 off your first month. That's a value of 10 free meals. Again, go to homechef.com art19 for $90 off. Hey, what's happening, Mike Schmidt, 40-year-old boy podcast? No, nobody's here. Nobody's making me laugh. I'm laughing at myself because I did a dumb thing, uh, which I often do, and then I tell you about it, and that's the crux of this show. That's the that's the only reason that's the only reason this show's been in business for 13 goddamn years. I do something dumb, and I tell you about it, but that seems like too long of a title for a show, so we went ahead with the 40-year-old boy. Instead of, I'd done something dumb, and I'd like to tell you about it, which doesn't fit on a t-shirt at all. Uh, by the way, t-shirts, I know people write me all the time, they're like, hey, Mike, should we do t-shirts? And I'm like, you know what? That would be a pretty good idea. I like the idea of doing t-shirts, uh, but I also like the idea of paying my rent a little bit more with the pandemic, throwing everything for a loop, tossing me to and fro like an Etch-A-Sketch and, and, and erasing the picture that I had drawn on said Etch-A-Sketch because if you know this, you draw a picture on an Etch-A-Sketch and then you shake it to make the picture disappear on the Etch-A-Sketch. I just like saying Etch-A-Sketch. Isn't it fun to say Etch-A-Sketch, everybody? Uh, I'm laughing at myself because I've been doing the show 13 years. I was going to say 13 hours. <laughs> I have been. Uh, and I tuned in here for the last one with you guys. That's what I, I hit. finally hit record. Um, 13 years we've been doing this show. And uh, and that's, look, man, that's uh, that's not quite 15. Certainly somebody has been doing a 15-year podcast can come to me and go, fuck you, man. I dominate you veteran-wise. And I'll be like, yeah, I it wasn't a fucking dick-swinging contest. Or was it? Perhaps it is. I'll tell you what, if I've been in a dick swinging contest for the last 13 years, my arm is fucking tired. Uh, I don't know who's going to step to me. Who else is, who's been doing the podcast this long? Adam Curry, my buddy, David, Jimmy, uh, Jackie, and, and that's it. Everybody else is a new Johnny come lately. Everybody else is like, you know, now there's, there's, there's podcasts about podcasts, about podcasts, not even, not even just one podcast. There's it's look, podcast inception has happened and I missed it. All right. I'm not going to lie to you. I got, I got, we got, uh, what's, uh, is it Eric page? What's his name now? I'm not sure. And, uh, Ed page, Eddie, did he choose Eddie? I don't know what he chose, uh, but he's out there now and he's doing inception about podcasts and I'm sure Leo's doing it as well. And our boy, Tom Hardy. Oh, sigh. Tom Hardy, Tom Hardy. I tell you what, you know, you ever see that shtick where like a guy sees a hot girl and he bites his lip. He's like, Ooh, or when a girl is like flirting with you and she bites her lip. Ugh. I, I gotta be honest. If I met Tom Hardy, I might bite his lip. I'm not even going to fuck around. I'm not going to give him a chance to pout at me. I'm not going to give my ch- myself a chance to pine. I'm just going to step right up and bite Time Hardy's lip. And you know what? There's nothing he can do about it because he's we. All of these movie guys are we. Why I could have my... I'll tell you what. If I was thrown into a jail, let's put it this way. If I was thrown into a jail in Gen Pop with all of the movie stars, uh, I'd be boss of the block. I'd be the king. I, I would get all the ass and cigarettes I could possibly want out of these guys because they're all tiny wan guys. They're drinking kale shakes and eating air. That's all they do. They chew up dialogue. These motherfuckers, I'm eating protein. I'm eating fucking goat and pork and other goddamn things. Look at my arm. Look at my fucking arm. I'm holding it right now to the microphone. Uh, I would just get, I would just clean these guys out. I would be a fucking king and I would just be trading them back and forth. I'd be in the shower. 
I'd be like, oh, who's this? Fucking Legolas? Bend over, Legolas, and I'd fucking go to school. Uh, that seems aggressive and wrong and probably something I shouldn't have said. I apologize. Let me take that back. Let me, you know what? 13 years, you'd think I'd know better than to talk about having sex with Legolas. I know you people are going to turn me off. Nobody's going to be, you're going to be like, ah, Mike, come on. Orlando Bloom's off limits. And I'm like, you know what? You're probably right. But you know what? I say this. Orlando Bloom was off limits five years ago in the eighth year of this podcast. But now in year 13, forget it. That guy's getting railed. Uh, so why was I laughing? Well, first of all, let's discuss this. It's Sunday. Uh, and yes, it's the Lord's day. Certainly. I know he's very busy right now, passing out books and communion wafers. Everybody's biting his body. That's cool. Everybody's drinking his blood. Good for you guys. Perhaps you're listening to this on your way home from church. You're off to get a fried chicken dinner. Even though you're so full of savior, you couldn't possibly have another bite. Even though you chug lugged his blood. Uh, I'm going to say his blood is what? O positive. It's got to be right. J positive. Aha, Jesus. B positive for Bible. I don't know. G positive for God, whatever the fuck it is. But you chugged it, man. You drank it out of that chalice. Even in pandemic times, you wore a mask to church and then you took it off to drink fucking Jesus's blood out of a goddamn cup with everybody else you ever met in your fucking life. Look around, look to your right, look to your left. You just French kiss those people. Literally, you can pretend you didn't. But if you're in church, you're drinking Jesus's blood or whatever the fuck right out of the priest's cup. Uh, there's people in line ahead of you. There's people in line behind you. You guys just totally swap spit. How many people got herpes from a fucking Bible chalice? Got to be a million, right? I'm going to say a million. Over the course of the years that they've done this, that they've been pouring blood out of a goddamn chalice, I'm going to say that everybody got herpes. A million people got herpes. And, I, and you know what? I'm not going to say it's less or more. I think I'm right on the fucking money. And I, I'm not even going to go fucking, well, I'll, I could be wrong 100,000 either way. Bullshit. I'm going to stick to it. One, six, zeros, couple of commas. That's how many people have gotten herpes from a goddamn Bible class. Take that. You wanted to drink Jesus's blood. And then the next week you get your herpes sore bursted out and you walk up to the chalice. You're like, hey, Jesus's blood is going to make this go away. Right. And then Father Jim's like, yeah, sure it is. Whatever. And then you drink it. Then he wipes it off with that horrible fucking napkin or handkerchief or Bible fucking thong. I don't know what the fuck it is. Um, I haven't been to church in a while, but I bid you peace. If you were here, I'd shake your fucking hand. All right. Uh, so oh, what I've been talking about, oh, it's Sunday. So yes, it's the Lord's day. And I don't think we've been out on a Sunday yet. I know I've done Mondays. I've done Thursdays. I, I did Tuesdays. I know I've been on a Wednesday before. Uh, I, I, here's the thing I'm going to do. You know what I am? I'm, I'm the uh, Cinderella of podcasting. Does that make sense? No. The Prince Charming of podcasting. I think that makes more sense, right? He was, uh, he's the one who went door to door with the shoe. Uh, Prince Charming was looking for Cinderella and he's like, look, I uh, put your foot in here. By the way, that's not also, that's not sanitary either. Jesus fucking Christ. What? Everything is completely unsanitary. Every goddamn story, green eggs and ham. Those guys are sharing a fork on a train somewhere. That's not fucking fun. Somebody's going to die. Everybody's going to get the pandemic from this shoe business. Fucking Prince Charming going door to door. Hey, can I see your foot? Hey, do me a favor. Give me your foot. Cause let's be honest, man. It, it, those people, they, and cause he's the prince, you got to show him your foot. And now it's Cinderella in a book and you're like, hey, that's charming. But if there was like a real country like in Hungary and their prince went door to door. Uh, yes, I am here to see foot. Please bring out foot. Where is daughter? Must see foot. You'd be fucking grossed out. Now you'd have to do it because he's the goddamn prince of the fucking country. Prince Dracula or whatever the fuck. And then you'd fucking put your head on a pike if you didn't do it. So you're just like, all right, go get daughter. Must show foot to prince. And she goes out. Da. And she fucking whips it out and he drinks potato liquor and he sneers because he's a fucking monster. Uh, I feel bad for those people in Hungary having to show their feet to the prince. Fucking brutal. But in a book, now in a charming book, if you got a bluebird who puts a veil on her face, everybody's like, oh, how nice. Oh, how sweet. Prince Charming doesn't have a weird ass fetish. He just wants to put this fucking <laughs> this fucking washerwoman's foot in a clear glass shoe. Tell me this is in fucking bananas. Come on, man. This is wrong on several levels. Yeah, he doesn't have a foot fetish. That's why he's cramming the, the local washerwoman's foot into a see-through glass shoe so he can see her toes all smushed. Oh, what a fucking weirdo. Uh, Prince Charming is anything but. I'm going to tell you that right fucking now. But it doesn't matter. He's there. He shows up at your door. You got to whip it out. Must see foot. Bring out foot, please. Again, like I said, in a book, it's charming. Everybody's like, this is awesome. I love this story. Isn't it great when the prince goes door to door and makes everybody show their foot? And even worse, man, he goes to the fucking... Uh, he goes to the Cinderella house and then those fucking hags who live there are like, check out our gross feet with like corns and fucking foot lice. Man, you don't want to have foot lice. Dude, if I got foot lice, just boil them. Just fucking literally boil all the meat off of them and I'll walk around with skeleton feet and just make clackety noises. 
Sure, I'll never be able to sneak up on anybody ever again, but it's a small price to pay to get rid of the foot lice. Get rid of these goddamn foot lice. Boil my feet, take off the meat, and let me walk around on skeleton feet. Clack, 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 clack. That'd be awesome. Dude, I think I want skeleton feet now. You just walk around, you sound like fucking Mr. Bojangles. You're just tap dancing all over the place. Again, I've already covered the fact that I can't sneak up on anybody at that point, but I'm not interested in sneaking up on anybody. I'm 53. In my youth, maybe I'm a sneaker. Maybe then I'm like, oh, no, I must keep my foot meat. (laughs) I'll do something else about the lice. But now boil them. I don't give a fuck. Boil them and stirp them and let me walk around on skeleton feet. I must do it. God damn it. Now it's not even like I'll settle for skeleton feet. Now I'm almost insisting on skeleton feet. Is there a doctor in the house? Who will come up? Who will step up with a Dutch oven filled with boiling water? And I can plunge my feet in there to get rid of foot lice and make a foot broth. And all my foot meat will boil off. And then I'll walk around on skeleton feet. I'm excited about this plan. I'll be fucking tip-tapping all over the goddamn joint. And actually, you know what? That actually sounds like something out of a fucking fairy tale book. Like a guy, whenever he walked, he made like click-clack noises. Oh my God, see? I'm my own kind of Prince Charming. I'm like Prince Bone Charming or whatever the fuck. Uh, that's perfect. But it's Sunday and, uh, and certainly you're all, I, I, you're doing the unhygienic blood swap with fucking Jesus and that, and it's good for you. Uh, but now you're off to go have a fried chicken dinner. Like I mentioned, or you're going to go to a fucking peach cobbler or, uh, you know, I remember once when I went to, uh, I, and I, and I honestly, I can't remember if it was a fucking church thing or if it was just a, uh, uh, like a funeral I don't know. We remember once for fucking pancakes. And I, you know what I had on? I, I, I can totally remember this because I was shrimpy. I had a fucking, you know, that little kid suit with the shorts. Oh my God. That like little boy, blue Lord Fauntleroy fucking outfit. I had a suit on like a little, like it was like, I think, you know what? It might've been my communion. I might've been in my communion suit. Cause I know I did communion. Uh, I did. So again, I look, I'm, Hey, look, I've had the savior in my mouth. Don't pretend that I haven't. Don't try to say to me, well, Mike, you don't know what it's like to have the savior in your mouth. You don't know what it's like to drink the blood out of the fucking chalice. Are you kidding me? I totally wrap my lips around the chalice. Even as a kid, I had to drink the blood and drink, eat the fucking wafer and all that other bullshit. I've had a total mouthful of Savior. Uh, and then after Savior, we went and got pancakes. That's what I remember. It was fucking awesome because I remember I got to, because it was like uh, our whole family or whatever who came to witness my communion. And again, I had the little short man suit on, like the little fucking, I, I'm pretty sure I had like little short pants on. And if I, I don't know if I had a tie on. I might have had a tie on, like a clip on, of course. And uh, and just a little suit that matched, right? But I remember it because like the adults, even in this fucking restaurant, because there were so many people, there seemed to be an adult table and a kid table. And, uh, and nobody noticed like me when I got my pancakes. So you know what I did? I put peanut butter on my pancakes. I was just like, because they had it on the table. They had like peanut butter and jelly and butter and all the stuff. And I just, I put peanut butter all over my pancakes. And that was the day. That was the day I discovered that peanut butter on pancakes was for fucking dukes and duchesses. It is the greatest food of all time. Um, and, and everybody's like, well, do you put maple syrup on? You can't look, if you want to queer the deal, go ahead and put some maple syrup on there. That's fine. But now you're going sweet on sweet. And I don't care for that. I like a peanut butter. Cause here's what I like. All right. I've talked about this before with my giant wedge of fucking peanut butter toast. If you just make like, if you get like three pancakes and they're scalding hot out of the pan and you, uh, you immediately put butter and peanut butter on them and then you smoosh them together. Like the peanut butter melts because it's, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, I don't know like fucking peanut caulk, whatever the fuck it just melts. So it, and then it drips and it oozes like all over the pancakes. So it makes its own syrup, but it's a peanut buttery syrup. It's not some sort of uh, maple nonsense. And I'll tell you this, I, you know, fucking last year when I was doing the keto thing, remember that for two months when that was a great idea and I lost 60 pounds and everything went to fucking hell. Um, I was shopping for different things to get and I bought maple syrup because they were like, you can have maple syrup on stuff. So I was going to make these weird keto waffles. Mary Beth, who's a listener to the show, was like, oh man, I totally have a mini waffle maker. You should get it. So I bought it still in the box. I've never even opened the fucking thing in a year. Um, but I went and bought maple syrup at the time and uh, and I bought a jug like I didn't, I didn't buy like a squeeze bottle at the time. There was a huge controversy over at Jemima and I didn't want to get caught in that fucking shootout. I'm not going to get caught in that Mexican standoff. Everybody's standing around pointing squirt bottles at one another. I'm going to be the one who gets sticky. Fuck all that. Uh, I was like, I'm not, I couldn't possibly, I couldn't cause I, and I will say this. All right. Again, uh, I'm a child. And so I, I like certain things. I like good food. I like to buy brand names. I do that all the time. So normally if I, I've never, I don't buy syrup. It's not my fucking things. I don't make pancakes or whatever. It's only recently during this fucking pandemic that I started buying waffles, like frozen waffles to make breakfast sandwiches. What a monster I am. Oh Christ. There's nothing like putting four pieces of ham with two pieces of fucking, uh, uh, three pepper Colby cheese in the microwave to zap that. And then you put that on a couple of egos with butter all over it. Oh, Jesus. 
<laughs> I call it the breakfast fist. It's just, just because it's about the size of your fist that it's just, oh my God. And I choke it down. It's so delicious. Dudes, I, do you know how much I love food? I love food so much. It's, it's going to be so hard to fight this off. I don't know why I have to, but I have to, right? Because I can't just eat myself to death yet. I mean, I've, I've got 22 years left. I should try to spend at least 15 of them ambulatory. Maybe the final seven, I can go ahead and lay in a bed and totally eat myself to death and be fucking finished. But now I've got to go ahead. I've got to run. I've got to, I got to lose some, I got to make the most out of the last 15 years. I got to, I got to dig at least 15 years to try to make this work and try to be successful and make some money. Right. So I have somewhere to retire to for the final seven years. And I, and look, I'm never going to own a house. We know this unless we do that thing where we're all going to get together and buy a compound, which I, and again, I, I always joke about that, but I'm not really joking about that. Like I, I would do that if it was a big enough, nice enough place. I mean, I'm not going to live with all you fucking idiots at a four bedroom fucking apartment. That just seems small uh, or in a two bedroom apartment for that matter. And also, you're not idiots. I'm the idiot here, please. I don't even know why the fuck I said that. But I'm not going to live with all you people in a small joint. Like, if we had a sprawling compound, like, I, I'm not, look, I'm not a Zillow whore. I'm not one of those dudes who's like, ooh, check this out, five-car garage. Like, I don't, because I know I'm never going to buy a house. And that is fucking sobering, man. It is, it is. I'm 53. If it was going to happen, it was going to happen. Unless, like I said, all of a sudden, everybody, we all get together and we buy, like, a fucking compound. That'd be sweet as hell. Um, I do find myself, and I've said this before, I find myself envying homes and things like that, where I'll, I'll, I'll go to a place and go, oh man, I could really, I'd really like a house. Um, but then, but then, and I, you know, I, I saw a house that on a, on an advertisement in the LA times and it was so open fucking floor plan. God, I loved it. I loved it so much. And I was like, oh dude, that'd be sweet. Uh, but I know it's never going to happen. And, and again, also it was too small for all of us. I am. I'm, I'm only look, I'm only interested in buildings that will house all of us. And you know who you are, everybody, all of you, anybody, if you can hear my voice, if you can hear the sound of this voice, grab your pets, grab your bicycles, grab your dogs, grab your babies, grab your fucking fish and meet me at the compound. We're making it happen. I'll be the governor. I'm not going to put anybody's head in a fish tank. I'm just going to hang out. You guys can do whatever you want. We'll watch movies all night. Tell ghost stories. Don't you want to tell ghost stories in your in our own compound house? God, that'd be great, wouldn't it? See, this is how I get wistful on a Sunday. If this was a weekday, I'd be all business. But on a Sunday, I can allow myself to dream. Because again, it's the Jesus day. So I can go ahead and lean back and just go, ah, you know what? The Lord himself would go ahead and grant this wish. Perhaps he will. If I talk about this on a Sunday, it's like I can manifest it. It's like rubbing two sticks together. If you talk on a Sunday about the things that you want, and then he comes forward and he's like, yes. It's like, uh, who's that one fucking... You ever see that dead psychic dude who looks like a lady? Not not fucking uh, Benny Hinn's like a fortune teller or, or a, a faith healer, but there's some dude. His name's like Oscar Mercado, or is that that might be a, a fucking outfielder for the Indians? Hold on a second. <laughs> I apologize. I have a fantasy draft later today on Sunday, and I am I am fucking wiped out. Like I, I just my brain is filled with outfielders. So because uh, I don't know if you know this, position scarcity this year says go for outfielders early. There's probably, there's probably, you know, you have to have five outfielders on each team. I'm going to say that there's probably only three good outfielders per team. So if you can corner the market on outfielders, you're doing pretty good. Uh, but the problem is, again, with the position scarcity with 15, only good, only 15 good outfielders, you get to pay out the fucking ass. So you can buy five outfielders for 40 bucks each, but then you got 60 bucks to build the rest of your roster. And that's a goddamn mess. Uh, take it from me. The guy who got his ass beat last year in both of his leagues because of the pandemic. There's a guy talking about your gang in the fucking Pardo League, and he's like, aha, I can't wait to beat Mike again. And I'm like, oh, dude, you played a third of a season last year. We didn't even start till fucking July. And also, I drafted a team in April with a fucking full 162-game strategy. I didn't draft a team thinking, oh, you know what? This will be a sprint of 60 games. No, man, because you pay, you pay for hitting in the beginning of the fucking year, and then you trade for pitching in the middle of the goddamn year. That's how you do it. That's how you bounce it out. You get so far ahead in the hitting categories that you then deal off your excess bats, and now you get all the pitching categories. That's how I won two years ago, my first year in the goddamn league, my first year back playing after six years of absence, came back, fucking stormed in, triumphant, dominated the league and won it, bought tickets to go to Ireland, and then the pandemic came and ruined everything. What the fuck? I was supposed to go to Ireland and do shows last year. Yes, you're tired of hearing it. We all had plans. You were going to plant a garden of snap peas, and I was going to go to fucking Ireland, and some of you were going to have a baby, and someone was going to go ahead and fucking, I don't know, put up a stained glass window, whatever the fuck you had going on. I know. It sucks. We're all pissed. But, oh, can you feel it? 
Can you feel that we're, we're about to burst out of our cocoons? We're going to be like, like uh, chrysalis or pupa, as our friend Her- Hannibal Lecter would say. We're going to burst out. We're like the cicadas. It's, it's a metaphor, man, with the cicadas coming out now. They're going to be fucking, what do they sleep for 17 years? And then they come out and they shriek at everybody. That's what we're going to do. We've been locked up for like fucking 13 months. And now we're just going to burst out and just fucking scream in the streets. And the worst part is people are already doing it. Like I just saw some story in Florida. They got spring break guys there. And then, and then also they've got no, <laughs> this is the thing that drives me crazy. They have no masks at the spring break. And now look, I've been, I've been a nanny for a fucking year. I am so tired of yelling at people and going, Hey, put a fucking mask on idiot. We all know. Because at this point, if you're not putting a mask on, now you're just a fuckhead. Now you're just doing it on purpose. Now you're just pointing fingers. I mean, unless you've been vaccinated or whatever the fuck, that's fine. But if you're some dude who won't take the vaccine and you won't wear a mask and you're just beating yourself in the chest with a fucking deer leg bone and you're screaming at a fucking monolith, an obelisk or whatever the fuck, get your 2001 ass back out of the fucking uh, the, the public eye and go back to a jungle somewhere. You fucking idiot. You're not you're not you're not fit for society if you're fucking yowling and screaming still about the goddamn masks. And I, and I know you feel the same way about me. You're like, well, Mike, why are you still talking about the fucking masks? You're right. Like I just said, I don't want to be a fucking nanny. I don't want to be there and be like, Hey man, wear a fucking mask. I, I, I spent a year, you know, fucking doing the right thing, talking about the right thing. And, and, and now there's people out there. These, this isn't the right thing. Slam demic, scam demic. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Honestly. Go to church, take off your mask, get herpes. Seriously. Uh, but I see these, like, there's videos from fucking spring break. And not, not, not only does nobody wear a mask, but now they're, like, getting into fistfights. And they're smashing windows, and they're having huge brawls. And I, I just, we are so close to children of men. We are so close to it coming. It's going to happen. I mean, children of men, of course, has the the added benefit of nobody else can get pregnant. But, but I mean, this this fucking country, this nation, this continent, whatever. It's just, it's this apple cart is ready to get upset and all the fucking apples are going to roll into the goddamn sea. What a mess we've got brewing. Uh, and, and I, you know, it's funny, like I said, I don't want to nanny anybody, but I'm, I'm so, I'm just fucking ready. I'm ready to burst out. I'm ready to hit the fucking street and start running and just, and, and not, I don't want to be in my house anymore. I don't, and I, and like I told you last week, you know, we talked about this. I told you I was terrified, you know, and, and it's true. I, I don't want to, I'm scared to start my life over again. I'm excited. I'm really fucking excited to do it and I can't wait. But at the same time, I, you know, what if I, I don't do it right? We talked about this last week. You know what I mean? But, but you try to, you try to stagger through. Oh, and it's funny. <laughs> Remember I talked about uh, the vaccine envy and shit like that last week. And I was like, people get policing you with the vaccine and they give you a hard time and stuff. Um, thankfully, and I will thank all of you, the, the people I heard from regarding the vaccine were very kind. Everybody seemed to be uh, rooting for me and it, and they were happy for me and they were happy that I got it. And I was very happy and proud and pleased to hear from all of you. Thank you so much. Uh, but there were, <laughs> there was another subset of people though, who decided to wag their fingers at me. And, uh, and this is, uh, I think, I think there was only like 20 total. It was, it was, but 10 came in like the first day. Uh, and then it's been dribs and drabs since then for a week or whatever. But um, I mentioned I'm getting the second vaccination this coming Tuesday. And then I said, I'm on a plane on Friday and I'm going to fucking Denver to hang out at my buddy's house. And uh, and I heard immediately, like I said, like it had to be 10 people the first day and a half. And uh, they were like, hey, man, I'm so happy you're getting the vaccine. Did you know you're not supposed to be on a plane for two weeks? Uh, Mike, it's really cool that you're getting the vaccination, but you don't have a full viral load until two weeks. And uh uh, yeah, man, I know that I did the research. I've read everything that you've read. I've I'm on the Mayo Clinic's mailing list, which quite frankly is only for the pandemic. But in, in the coming years, I'm sure will be handy for any number of uh, ailments that prop up inside my life. Uh, but I, I, you know, I, I know that. And is it the most responsible thing to get on a plane? Probably not. And go to an airport? Probably not. I, I, I won't lie. I mean, I've. Like I said, for a year, I've been very stern and said, hey, look, do this, follow this. We can get out of this. Let's all make it happen. Uh, But I have to think that having the double vaccine and I'll double mask at the airport, I'll double mask on the plane. Uh, My buddy and his wife have been vaccinated. So that's where I'll be at their house. And uh, and I'm 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 just I'm ready. I'm fucking ready. I think I'm safe. You know, I spent a year doing the right thing, wearing masks, not going anywhere, boiling my fucking hands when I came home. 
Uh, I didn't buy any hand sanitizer. Now, I will tell you this. I, I had friends who went really bananas who would like fucking wash their groceries, every piece of groceries they brought in. And they, you know, there were people who had bleach handy all the goddamn time. And, and that's fine. I mean, I'd much rather you erred on the side of caution than you were just like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have a big bowl of COVID germs in my fridge. And I think if I drink them, it'll give me some sort of immunity. Hey, you've seen those things. They look like when I was a kid, I used to have this fucking bullseye game. And it was a bullseye that was made of felt. You would hang it on the wall and you had ping pong balls with Velcro on them and you'd throw it and try to score. It was like a dart game but without darts. And uh, and that's what the COVID germ looks like to me. It's just because the ball was covered in Velcro with like the little bites. And this COVID germ is just so, it's just fucking awful, man. It just, you know what it looks like? It looks like uh, the guy, the jack in the box head got shingles. That's what the COVID fucking germ looks like. It's so fucking gross. Uh, I hate it. I can't stand it. I hope I never fucking see it again, at least until COVID 22 and 27 come out. And that's all coming. Don't blame me, man. I'm telling you right now. And you know why? It's because everybody's going ahead and drinking at the fucking church. But what the fuck do I, you know, again, I, I recognize people want to get into society. They're all at a fucking starting line waiting for the gun to go off. I just think you should wait until you're vaccinated. And then even after that, you know, wear a mask, socially distance, but you can you can stop being as careful as you've been, in my opinion, if you're vaccinated. I know what Fauci says. I know I've read this and I will do what I can. I Because, look, I don't want to get fucking sick, whether it puts me in the hospital or not. I don't get sick at all. Um, do I anticipate that I'm going to be wearing a mask for the rest of my life? No. Do I anticipate that I'm going to stop shaking hands? I, well, it all depends on the other person. I'm not going to force anybody to do it. But, dude, I'm ready to shake some hands. I'm ready to hug some people. I'm ready to fucking throw somebody on my goddamn shoulder and carry him around. I'm ready to get into the pool and have chicken fights. I don't fucking care. I want contact. I want people, man. Jesus Christ. I just, I, I want the move. I want all of it, baby. Um, so I'm going to my friends next week and, uh, and I'm slowly emerging here from the cocoon here in, in, uh, you know, I'd gone to, I'd gone to Pat's house to see movies a couple of times during the, the pandemic. We were doing it with the six, six feet away and, wearing masks and we were in the backyard and stuff. And it was great. I, man, I loved it. And honestly, if the pan, when the pan, if, if the pandemic, when the pandemic ends, um, you know, it, it's really hard to be lonely verbally. If that makes any sense to admit like, like, I, you know, I'm not lonely where I'm like, boo hoo, I'm lonely. No, I'm, uh, I just like seeing my friends and hanging out and doing stuff. And I've talked about this many times before. My friends have kids. My friends have families. They have wives. They have responsibilities. So, you know, when I go to Pat's, I said, I said to him the other day, I'm like, hey, man, I, you know, I would come over here every week, one night and just watch movies all night. Like, that's fucking awesome. And, and he's just like, oh, yeah, you know, no, that's a, a, sure that we'll tell you, we'll figure it out. You know what I mean? And, and it's, it's. I don't want to invite myself over to fucking people's houses. I don't. I, I know that's ridiculous and terrible. It's like when I love going to Canada. Like you know, when I, I went to Canada, I didn't get to go last year, but I went the previous year. You know, I go to my buddy's Ken's house, and, and we we watch shows, and there's a fire pit, and we had food, and we hung out, and we went to the movies, we went to restaurants, we went to axe throwing, and we did we did a fucking escape room. All all of that stuff was super cool. But if I just went to Canada and we just we just hung out and watched movies every single night and just fucking laughed, I mean I. I, and again, I'm sure it's part of me being old. It's, it, it's 8 million different things, but it's, it's what I want. You know, like when I play poker with my friends now on zoom, like I, I even, even once the pandemic ends, I would play poker with my friends every week on zoom. I, I, <laughs> we used to play once a month in person. And I, I think we're probably going to revert to playing once a month in person. But for me, I would play one, I would play every Sunday night again. Still. I love seeing my friends. I love laughing. I love doing all of it. And, and especially if the pandemic wasn't there and look, you know, it's better to do it every week on zoom than to try to do it every week in person. Cause the guys aren't going to do that. Even though I would love to have a weekly poker game. I want to be one of those guys. That's what I want to be. I want to be a guy with a cooler full of Schlitz and a fucking cigar, like a Swisher sweet. And I'm playing poker with my buddies once a week poker night. Oh my God. And your wife comes in with air freshener and sandwiches and she's furious at you. But she's also happy because you're like kind of a man. God damn, that's what I want. I want old school. You know what I want? I want 1974. Can we bring 1974 back and make me a grown up in it? Uh, Except for all the bad stuff. Can we keep all of the bad stuff of 1974 in the past and just bring all of the good stuff forward? Oh, that's what I want. I want the good stuff. Did you know that? Did you know that I'm looking for the good stuff on this Sunday? 
this Lord's day of podcasting. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm doing. We're trying it on. Like I said, we're going door to door. We're Prince Charming, buddy. Give me your foot. Jam your foot in this podcast. Let's see if it works for you. I, I demand it. I demand you jam your foot in this podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're trying on Sunday for, for now. We won't do Sunday this later this week because I'm going to be out of town. Uh, but I'll be whatever the fuck I, we're, I will be much earlier this coming week. I, you, and you guys are just like, Hey, tired of hearing it. And I'm like, Hey, I don't blame you. Um, I said, I went to Pat's house this week and, and I did to watch a movie. Uh, <laughs> do you guys know what the Snyder cut is? Um, the Snyder cut is Zack Snyder is a director and he, he, he made 300. He remade, I believe, Night of the Living Dead or Dawn of the Dead. I can't remember which one he made. Uh, he made Batman versus Superman. He made Man of Steel. He made Watchmen. Uh, he's a very polarizing figure to a lot of people. A lot of people love him. A lot of people fucking hate him. And uh, and I can see both sides of it. I really enjoyed Watchmen. Uh, after watching Man of Steel a second time, I was kind of like, you know what? This isn't as bad as I thought it was the first time. Uh, but Batman versus Superman, I watched once. I will never watch it again. And that was the one that told me, you know what? I don't need to see any more of these because, um, Zack Snyder got put in charge kind of of the DC universe. So he was the guy making all the movies. And so then he made, uh, Batman versus Superman. And then he had an idea for like three other movies. Like they wanted him to make a movie called justice league. And I will, I'll just brief you on this. There are two major comic book companies that have existed. Uh, one is called DC Comics and one is called Marvel Comics. The, and this is for you look and I know now everybody's half a fucking nerd and everybody knows the facts and I'm not enlightening you. I don't this is for people who don't know. If you know this, don't yell. Uh, but there's DC Comics and there's and there's Marvel Comics. And DC Comics have Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman and Green Lantern and Hawkman and Red Tornado and all these other people. And then uh, Marvel is where you see, of course, Captain America, Spider-Man, Black Panther, Hulk, Thor, Iron Man, Black Widow. They've done a much better job of showing you all of their characters because they did it right. Marvel Comics made their universe on film uh, the right way. They started with Iron Man because they didn't have the rights to Spider-Man. So they, Iron Man was going to be their, their fulcrum and Robert Downey Jr. was so fucking good. And they had a plan. And their plan was all along, they were going to do Iron Man and Captain America. They were working toward the Avengers. Now, the Avengers are a superhero group. It's a bunch of different guys. It's Iron Man. It's Black Widow. It's Black Panther. It's all all these different people. And they become a team. Okay. Well, the Avengers, Black Panther's not in the Avengers, but like Black Widow, Hulk, Iron Man, uh, whatever. You don't care. What? what I, well, actually, you know what? The problem is a lot of people do care. There's a lot There's a lot of people who are just like, actually, uh, Spider-Man is not really in the Avengers on film, however. Oh, my Christ. Do me a favor. Uh, go into the bathroom right now at a high school, a local high school. Just walk in. Go into the nearest bathroom in the high school and dunk your head in the toilet for me. Just hold on to your own hair and put your head in the toilet and then walk to the closest locker and shove yourself in it with your ridiculous will actually and pushing your fucking glasses up your nose to tell me who Spider-Man is friends with and, and what I need to know about rocket raccoon and the talking tree. Yes, I know all of these are fucking badass and fun and cool, but you know, what's not cool is when someone goes, well, what you don't understand is Spider-Man actually when the gamma rays hit the Hulk and Spider-Man was bitten by a spider. Oh my God. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. That's right. You get a pink Panther. Shut up. Because I don't need to hear it. You don't need to educate me on what's going on in the comic world. Because look, I know enough. I don't need to know everything. I'm not a layman. I'm not some dope who's like, who's the guy in the spider suit? That's fucking dumb. No, no. I know exactly who that is. <laughs> spider. <laughs> Mitch Trubisky loves Spider-Man. Um, so I... Uh, I, I'm, I'm explaining this only for people who don't know what it is. Now, if you're a nerd who knows all this, yes, I know. It's like what I did. <laughs> I made the mistake of doing this once before. I did Jackie Cation's Dork Forest podcast. I think this is the last. I've done it like twice or maybe three times. But the last time I did it, I did an episode about wrestling. And it was me and another guy. And uh, and this guy was, he was a... Uh, he was a wind me up and watch me go guy. And I was like, oh boy, I'm not going to compete with this. And I, it's just, I, I, I shrink in the face of that because I don't want to, uh, 
uh, you know, my instinct is to back at the classroom lob spitballs. So if this guy's going off on his, you know, he's pedaling his nerd bike all over the place, I just don't want to go, hey, you know, here's the thing, though. You don't understand. And also, if I had knowledge, I brought it to bear. But he would be like, he he almost uh, he almost came across like he thought it was real. And, and look, I love wrestling, too. I know it's ridiculous and silly. Uh, when I was a kid, certainly, I, I enjoyed it uh, a whole lot more than I enjoy it now because now I have to watch it with a jaundiced eye and just go, oof, yeah, no, that was a dumb move. Shouldn't have done that. That's just, e. you're insulting my intelligence. Like telling anybody now that I like wrestling, I have to qualify. Well, look, I don't really like WWE wrestling. There's this new thing called AEW wrestling, but even they do stupid things. So I really like New Japan pro wrestling. But now with the pandemic, they've lost a lot of momentum. Uh, I was watching New Japan Pro Wrestling yesterday and an earthquake hit in the middle of a match. It was fucking awesome. It was real. It wasn't like some some bit. And no, I don't mean John Tenta came in and body splashed anybody. Uh, that's earthquake. He was a wrestler from a million years ago. Uh, but, but truthfully, I was watching New Japan Pro Wrestling and uh, Jay White and Hiroshi Tanahashi were in the ring and uh, or not in the ring, but they were certainly in the match. And then the whole building started to shake and make fucking crazy noises. And the Japanese announcers are just like, uh, <laughs> what's going on? And the camera pulls out. and You just see the lights fucking move and do it. It was a 7.0 quake. I don't know how close it was to the fucking building. But, dude, that's some scary shit. Like I had that happened to me two years ago. Yeah, I was at a fucking, I was at a Dodger game. It was the greatest, actually. It was really fun. It was me, Chip, Ted Lide, and Pat. And we were in great seats because Pat gets these great seats from a friend of his. And uh, Earthquake hit the park. And and it was it was a good one, man. It was a serious, shaky jolt. Like, the whole park was moving. You could see it swaying. And everybody's like, whoa, dude. And when you go through those, as long as nobody's dead, they're crazy fun and it's this weird shared experience we have with everybody in the building where you can kind of look around and go well that was fucking cool right that was pretty neat uh the only issue is unfortunately where if you're in the ballpark you're like all right well that seemed to be fun it was a big shake though i hope everything's okay and then when you leave there's bonfires and people dying and falling off of the hollywood sign and you're like oh no gee i guess that wasn't as fun as i thought because that's what happened in uh in the World Series in 1989, when San Francisco played Oakland, the Bay fucking area quake hit, and uh, you know the transformer went off. They were and it's it's scary as fuck. Go Google it on YouTube. It's great. They're watching. They're showing Jose Canseco jogging, jogging in from the outfield. That's you know the pregame show, and you hear people start screaming, and the whole camera starts shaking, and Tim McCarver's talking, and then Al Michael goes, uh, "Folks, I'll tell you what, we're having an earth," and then he's gone. The thing cuts off. The broadcast cuts off. It's just, it's classic. It's a really nice fucking piece of business where just, I, folks, I'll tell you what, we're having an earth and it just cuts off. Uh, and so then the park, you know, the power went out and stuff and they didn't know what the fuck was going on, but they were all like, they were fine. You know, when you're it, they're like, oh, okay, the park is fine and we're okay. Let's see if we can get the game underway, if we can get the power on. But then reports start coming in because this is 89. So this is before the fucking internet. Uh, and uh, yes, nerds, I know the internet was invented in 1981 or 65 or whatever the fuck. I know, but, but we, none of us had it. Nobody had that AOL disc had not been mailed to your house yet. So in 89, um, reports start trickling in that the Bay Bridge has collapsed and like all these people are dead and trapped under rubble because it was like a seven point fucking two. Uh, so that's the thing is you never know what's going on. Like you're fine. You're happy. You were, you survived. You're like, okay, cool. That was, and that was kind of a fucking fun ride. Uh, and then you step outside. And like I said, it's just a hellscape. And you're like, oh, that's a mistake. That happened once I went to see crouching tiger, hidden dragon. I was in the, me and Karen were in the theater and, uh, there was only a couple of other people in the theater and, the, and a fucking dude, an earthquake hit that like shook us. Like we had, she held my hand and we were like swaying back and forth. It was crazy. It was a really good shake. And they stopped the projector in the whole fucking theater rumbling. It was wild. And, uh, it ended, finally ended. And the, the other people in the theater, I think there's like one other couple and they just got up and walked out. See you later. Adios. And we were sitting there. And, uh, and the theater guy comes in and he's like, uh, how you guys doing? And we're like, okay, we're fine. How are you? And he's like, good. And we're like, is there any damage or anything? He's like, no, not really. It doesn't look like it. And uh, he's like, you want to watch the rest of the movie? We're like, yes. So we did. We watched the rest of the couch tire. <laughs> they just restarted the projector, which is fine with me. Um, but that's the thing is we watched, it was kind of cool because we were fine and we watched the rest of the movie, but we didn't know it was going to be outside when we got outside. We didn't know there, there, there might be fire. There might like a fucking mailbox might have tipped over and fallen on the hood of our car. We have no clue. But at that point, we could lose ourselves in some fucking high flying Hong Kong wire work and wonder what the fuck was going on outside. It was great. Um, so uh, so how the fuck did I spin into this? Holy Jesus, I can't believe I lost my train of thought. 
Oh, fucking uh, Cation's podcast. Yeah, so I was on with this fucking dude who, uh, you know, he knew everything and I knew nothing apparently. But also, even worse, was then I, we put out the podcast, which is great. And I had a, I had a fun time with Jackie because I always do. Uh, <laughs> but then the next few days, once her show comes out, then I then the, the wrestling people wrote me and they were just like, well, you didn't understand. It was 1987 when that thing you said happened and it was really 1986. And I mean, oh my God, dudes, I don't... I mean, I, I remember a lot of shit. Okay. I know a lot of stuff about a lot of things I know. And I know a little about everything pretty much, but boy, oh boy, if you're going to start hitting me with actual fucking dates of shit that happened, I'm, I'm especially now, like I will say this, people bring up stuff from the show uh, that I said as a joke in year three. And I'm like, Oh, oh man, I'm hilarious. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to go back and listen to that and hear it again. Uh, but that's, that's what I mean is people will take this stuff seriously. And so the comic book people, they'll, they also take it seriously. So again, and look, I'm not insulting you. You like what you like. And if you know a lot about it, that's perfect. If you're an expert, good for you. I'm happy for you and everybody you've ever met. And, and I know that they love hearing everything you need to know about Mysterio and his birthday. But listen, for me, and also there's a Rey Mysterio in wrestling. There's a Mysterio and a Rey Mysterio. You, I'm sure you know all of these things. And anything, any Mysterio-related content, you're the person to come to. Um but you walk a dangerous uh, line when you start bringing up uh, wrestling or comic books or Star Wars or any of that stuff because there are there are people where it is it is their fucking life's blood, man, and they'll just be like, "No, you don't understand." Padma, she knew Ray in a past life, and then one time Anakin was there, and oh my Christ, I feel everybody every Star Wars jagoff turns into C three PO when they start talking about the series. Uh, actually, Master Mike, what you don't understand is Chewbacca is really a gorilla, but on his father's side who had sex with an Ewok and then oh but there's no sex in the Star Wars universe unless it was between a brother and a sister <laughs> little joke about Leia there with Luke shut up nerd nerds hi I'm Ogre uh, and the, and look so BC3PO you can do that I, I there's things that I know I mean I've, I've been like that sometimes where I'm like no I know this and people are like no you're wrong and I'm like no I fucking know this but the internet now has come along because I used to be the guy who knew everything and now the internet's here so I got lazy I don't need to know everything I know stuff but I don't need to know stuff uh, why am I d- fucking doubling and tripling down on this I don't know anyway the point is comic books are fun as is wrestling as we all know in our in our heart and in our blood right yes uh, so this week I went over to my friend Pat's house to watch the Snyder Cut. And as I've said, he put out Death of Superman, or not Death of Superman, although he cribbed from Death of Superman. Well, actually, the series, he clearly, oh, shut up. Um, uh, why is Mitch Trubisky showing up? Because uh, he makes me laugh. All right. So what happened is this guy, Zack Snyder, gets handed the keys to do all the DC comic stuff. And he makes everything morose. And and dark and nighttime and sad, <laughs> like every, everything. Batman is just he he hates being Batman, and Superman is half a fucking pussy because he's like, hey man, I'm totally Superman, but Lois. I mean, it's it's just you know, and there's no humor in them at all. There's no there's nothing, and and, and fine. I mean, he wanted to have a different approach from Marvel, and he wanted to do things the way he does them, and there's nothing wrong with that. Until he turns out crap and he, he fucking put out a piece of fucking trash in Batman versus Superman because it was too early for Batman to fight Superman. This is another thing. They fucking. All right, dudes, prepare yourselves. This is going to be a fucking nerd onslaught. And I apologize. And I've probably and I've touched base on this already previously. But like. You know, in, in Marvel, they introduced guys slowly like they there was Iron Man and then we got a Captain America movie. So they explain they show you why Captain America became Captain America and they show you how Iron Man became Iron Man. And then you start to learn who these other people are. And then you're like, oh, and here's Thor and he comes to Earth and they're giving and you're so you're learning over the course of movies and years about who these people are. Well, fucking Warner Brothers and DC Comics are jealous of this. So they they have no fucking patience. So they just want to get right to their heroes. They don't want to build it. They don't want to build a universe. They don't want to be like you know something coy. I mean, like there's you know there's two Ant Man movies and people are like who the fuck is Ant Man? It's like yes, but if you saw Avengers, you're like I fucking love Ant Man. You never would have wanted an Ant Man movie. Nobody wanted a fucking Guardians of the Galaxy movie until they saw the Guardians of the Galaxy movie and they went this is fucking awesome. Nobody wanted a fucking raccoon and a smart ass and a tree and a blue chick. You know what I mean? It's like everybody's like, I don't know what the fuck who these people are. But then you see the movie, you're like, oh, no, they did it great. And it's fucking awesome. Uh, 
Whereas DC is just, they're just fucking, they're just, they, everybody's fighting. Nobody's happy. The world's always in peril, but it's not in peril. Cause here's the thing, man, you should be making Batman movies because he has so many great fucking villains. There should be a Batman. And that's why I'm so happy. The next Batman movie is going to be the Riddler. It's like, yes, you should have the Riddler fighting Batman because in fucking Batman versus Superman, Batman's fighting Superman. And then later on, you know who Batman fights guys from space. And so, and then Wonder Woman shows up for no reason in Batman versus Superman, other than again, for the fact that Warner Brothers is impatient and they want to do a Wonder Woman movie. So like, Hey, throw the chick in there. And they're like, why, what does she even have to do with anything? I don't know, but have a bunch of drum noises play. And then she'll run in and stab a guy. And everybody's like, yay. And then she does. And then her movie's a hit. And then they make a second movie, which I did not watch because again, I told you after Batman versus Superman, I was out. And then Wonder Woman 84 is, uh, it's, I've heard it's just a tremendous, terrible mess. So I never gave it a shot. A shot. I was like, whatever the fuck. So I never watched Justice League. I never, I never watched any of these movies. I watched Wonder Woman's first movie, and it was entertaining. I enjoyed it. I, I won't lie. Um, but the, and I was ready to watch the second one. But then when it came out, everybody's like, oh my god, it's just they Batman versus Superman, Wonder Woman. Like it's just stupid. And I'm like, oh fuck. And I, and I know you're thinking to yourself, look, it's the pandemic. What the fuck else are you doing? Watch it. What are you watching besides nothing? Well, I've been watching stuff all the time. I, you know, here's, here's what I watched. I watched coming to America too. How about that? I, 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 that took up a couple hours of my time. I went over to Pat's house. We watched coming to America and coming to America Two back to back. Hey, that was a mistake. <laughs> here's how I felt. We watched coming to America and coming to America Two. And let me tell you this coming to America is hilarious. That's what I'll say about that night of movie making. Now I will recognize this. I have read a lot of things since this night and uh, and this is what there's a reason I haven't attacked it and a reason I haven't said bad things because I love coming to America. It's a fucking awesome movie. I think I know every line in it. It is a seminal moment of of comedy filmmaking for me. I saw it at the theater probably like fucking five six times. I loved it. It was it was the barbershop is fucking hysterical. The the fucking dude. <laughs> I came around the corner. Martin Luther King punched me in my chest. I said, Dr. King. He said, I'm sorry. I thought you were someone else. The, I mean, just fucking brilliance, brilliance coming to America. The first one is awesome. Coming to America two is, uh, is what I watched after I watched coming to America. All right. Uh, but the, here's the thing. I, I saw a bunch of people who loved it online and there were people who speculated, Hey, you know, it was made for a different audience. It wasn't made for me, Mike Schmidt. Uh, and also I'm, I'm now, what am I fucking 35 years older than I was when it came out? I think so. 88. 90, so that's 12 plus 21, I'm 33 years older. So that, that came out when I was 20, 21. And so it just, it was, <laughs> it was fucking awesome. And, uh, and it's still great. And so, and I love it, but now the new one, because Aaron, again, here's what they did. And I, I won't spoil anything. I'm not going to go into a bunch of stuff, but, um, you know, it's also been 33 years for the characters in the film. So what they've decided to do is that they're going to pass the torch. So Eddie and Arsenio go and they, there's a, uh, there's young, younger blood injected into the film is what I'm going to say. And again, I'm not going to spoil anything. Um, but in doing so, they do the thing that they always do. They, they defang the, the main characters. Like I told you, they always make Richard Pryor a pussy in his movies, like his early movies, not so much, but then later on, he's in the toy, he's in Superman three and they turn him into a fucking pussy. And even, even the movies with Gene Wilder, which are, you know, fucking funny, but it doesn't matter. He and Gene Wilder are fucking idiots. So they, they defanged Richard Pryor, who could have been fucking awesome. You know, he, he was go watch, you know, watch Jojo dancer and things like that. You're like, Oh my God. Um, Watch Blue Collar. Watch Which Way Is Up. You know, these are funny fucking movies and also not even funny, fucking really great performances. He was extremely talented, but they defanged him because that was how they saw him. They wanted to do it that way. And they did that to Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell was a guy who he made comedy movies and he was a fucking, yes, crazy, over the top, ridiculous party animal. He took chances. He didn't care. He was willing to do fucking any nonsense. And uh, and now in every movie he's in, he's the he's the dad who everybody thinks is dumb. He's a pussy. He's a bad things happen to him or where Kevin Hart gets to yell at him. And you're just like, oh, man, I like Will Ferrell. Like, why can't he be the driving force behind a comedy? Well, it's because he aged out. Now he has to be the one they make fun of. He has to be the dork. He has to be the dopey dad or whatever the fuck because of his age. You're just and you're just like, oh man, I don't want to watch that shit. And so in coming to America, they've defanged the heroes in pursuit of getting younger blood into the picture. 
And uh, and that's great for people who enjoy that sort of thing. But boy, do I love coming to America. That's what I'll say. Uh, because here's the thing that I will also share with you folks. And I think you know this about me and I've said it on here as well. I want to like things. I want to see things and go, that was fucking great. I'm, I'm not, I don't wish to hate watch anything. I don't want to watch things I think are bad. It's like when people are like, oh my God, you've got to watch Tiger King. I'm like, why? They're like, oh my God, it's just fucking, everybody's in it. It's so terrible. It's just, you got to watch it. It's so crazy. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to watch terrible people be terrible. It's in, in, if you, and look, if you liked it, that's awesome. I got no issue with you. That's fine. If you dug it, that's your thing and good for you. Uh, but also it came out at the right time, right in the beginning of the fucking pandemic. So it became a fucking viral thing and everybody went crazy. But for me, it's the same way. Like I stopped watching survivor. I don't, I don't watch any reality TV because a, it's not real. It's all fake. It's all scripted no matter what they say. So they just got out of, they, they were able to create content without paying writers and shit. And I know you don't care about that, but it's still kind of a sticking point for me. But secondly, uh, everybody's awful. They're encouraged to be awful. They want everybody to be bad. It's just people shouting at one another and being mean. And, and it's not even really mean. It's like they'll throw a piece of cake. Like nobody beats the fuck out of anybody on a real reality show. Wouldn't you see that? Like if there was a thing in survivor where they were out on a mission and a guy took a torch and he fucking hit a guy right in the fucking knees, took him out and won the race. And everybody's like, what the fuck was that about? And you'd be like, what the, what? I took him out. I fucking wanted to win this goddamn thing. And I know you're going to think, Mike, you're a psychopath. Yeah, I, I'm not rooting for that, but I'm saying that would be real. If you if you had a million dollars on the line, wouldn't you do anything to fucking win it? Up to and including possibly poisoning somebody's rice with a bug that you found? Of course you would. Don't put me on Survivor. There'll be bodies everywhere. <laughs> but I don't, I for me, it's like when I watched, I, I watched Chopped and I watched Forged in Fire. Like, and again, people are like, those are dumb shows. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. But but for me, that's my speed. I like that. Kind of, I watch I watch cooking shows or shows about cooking forever, but only certain ones. Because here's the thing. I tried to watch a show on, on Netflix and it was like the world cooking championship or whatever. I'm like, all right, fine. And it was pairs of cook from cooks from from different countries or whatever the fuck. And they had to team up and then they had to make cuisine from a certain country. And whatever. it didn't matter. It doesn't matter because what they did. First of all, they had a studio audience already. I hate it. No, there is no, as I've said many times before, how culturally bankrupt are we as a nation that Mugu Gai Pan needs a standing ovation. We, it's awful to watch. Nobody should be cheering and chanting and yelling for anybody to make a salad. It's just fucking stupid. So they have the audience, but then they, they, they always create these fucking pitfalls that would never really happen. They're like, all right, well, you, uh, you, you've gained an advantage in the next round, which means you get to take everybody's forks away as well as their knives and they have to cut food with a hard look. <laughs> also, a credit card. And it's like, why? why? I don't want to watch somebody fucking dicing goddamn scallions with a credit card because they lost a race 15 minutes ago. It's fucking stupid. But I they And then they got music and there's swooping lights and all sorts of. It's just, you know what? They just they think people are stupid. They can't just get to the meat of it. And I understand, you know, like, because again, in the old days, man, you watch the Galloping Gourmet, you watch Julia Child, even the early Food Network stuff. You watch Emeril, you watch Guy Fieri when they're alone in a fucking kitchen making food. That's relaxing. It's interesting. And it's fun. It's the person's personality and and a bowl of rice. And that's that's the essence of fucking cooking television. I don't need a somersault. I just, I don't need, nobody needs, nobody needs a fucking saxophone to tell them how much they loved that beef flank. I mean, it's, it's just silly. And so it's not for me, but there are people out there who it's for, and that's fine. I just choose not to watch it. I watch forged in fire and here's what forged in fire does. It drives me crazy at the end of the, like they have segments. It's all, you know, it's like 12 minute segments or 16 minute segments. So at the end of the first segment, it'll be like, uh, Oh my God, I don't like the way Carl looks. Oh, Carl seems a little wobbly. And they'll show Carl and he's like breathing heavy. And they're like, Carl, are you all right? And Carl will take a bottle of water and then he'll like bow his head and then they'll go to commercial and they'll come back and they'll be like, Oh, Carl doesn't look good. Carl, are you all right? And then they'll cut to Carl doing an interview. And he's like, Oh man, I'll tell you what, it was really hot in there. But once I grabbed the water, I was fine. And then he takes a sip of water and he's fine. But they build this fake phony tension. It's like, look, I got news for you. 
It is more than entertaining enough to watch four backyard hillbillies try to make knives in an hour, all right? Or 20 minutes, or whatever the fuck the first round lasts. That's fucking awesome. You don't need to insert drama. I love it when a guy, look, it's fun when a, a, a guy just fucking drops dead. That happens. There's a guy who passed out from the heat. They had to carry him out in a gurney. And then he's crying. He's like, oh, man, I got to go back to my forge in Tennessee and practice. You know what I mean? That's, that shit's interesting. But when you fucking make stuff up, nobody wants to make, don't make things up. Don't generate and create fucking drama. That's the worst. And look, I understand I'm taking some segment producers jobs away from them. And I apologize to you guys. Hopefully you can keep the gig, whatever the fuck. But I mean, those shows, they just, the, the manufactured bullshit drives me out of my fucking skull. And then you're going to be like, that's fun, Mike. But, um, uh, tell me again about pro wrestling. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm a mystery wrapped in a riddle stuff that a fucking enigma. I get it. I know. But that's what I told you. Wrestling is also stupid. I know wrestling is stupid, but I, I, there's enough. Like I went, I graduated from wrestling to the UFC because I like real violence, you know, like, like UFC was, was pro wrestling with real violence. And I was like, that's awesome. I was, that's, that's, well, I mean, I loved ECW too, which for that reason had a ton of real violence and that was genius. But then the UFC came along and I'm like, now I'm on board, but now even the UFC is turned into a fucking joke where they, they generated all the sorts of bullshit and drama and nonsense and fake beefs. And now every fight they sell, these guys are mad at one another. And then when the fight ends, they hug each other and you're like, Oh, okay. So you just, you just adapted the fucking pro wrestling playbook for no fucking reason. Good for you guys. All right. Uh, so I look, I guess what I'm trying to say to you guys is I am a fucking dichotomy. I don't know how to explain myself to you. <laughs> if you like comic books, you like Star Wars, you like wrestling, you like cooking, you like fucking knife shows, you like reality. I don't give a fuck. Like what you like. I hate a bunch of shit, but I also don't want to hate stuff. Like, I, I guess let's put it. This is a better way to put it. I don't want to hate watch stuff. If stuff blows, you're not going to get me to fucking watch it. I, I'll watch stuff I like. There's so many fucking things out there that I've never seen that I know I'll like. And I and I, I need to watch those before I watch some dumb fucking reality show about fucking people from Persia buying hotels and shit. I, it's just not for me. It's not my thing. There's so many works of art out there that I've never been able to fucking watch or or spend time with books, fucking movies. There's, it's and my time is running out. My doomsday clock is at fucking a minute to midnight, man. I got I got to fucking read all the books and see the movies and live the life that I can. So I can't waste it on some guy with a Fu Manchu mustache who fucking banged a leopard. That's not fucking interesting to me. Some guy, you know, with with khaki shorts and four sheriff's badges trying to find the remains of his fucking competitor's husband in the belly of a goddamn jaguar. I mean, I don't know. Fuck. That shit's not for me. Good for you. Hope you dig it. But I do like comic book movies to a certain extent. The Marvel ones are great. The DC ones, I just, I had to take a step back and go, nah, man, done. I'm good. Thanks. So I didn't watch Justice League, which was a movie that came out in 2017, maybe 18. I don't know. Came out a while ago. Now, Justice League was directed by Zack Snyder and Justice League was going to introduce the team of heroes like the Marvel Avengers. Of course, Marvel (laughs) <laughs> this is not even an exaggeration spent, I think 13 movies setting up the Avengers. Oh, uh, well, I apologize. That's that got to end game. I think they spent six movies to set up Avengers, right? Thor, Captain America, uh, Iron Man, Iron Man two winter soldier. Well, I think those are all before Avengers. What the fuck do I know? I don't know. Uh, but but, you know, Marvel did that where they paced it out. And so you knew these characters and then everything was interconnected. There's always an end credit scene that showed you they were in pursuit of something. They had a plan. They had they had written this out where it was a plan. It wasn't like Lost, where you watch Lost and everything was fucking cool as fuck. And that was in the last episode. Everybody's just hugging in sunlight. And you're like, that was your ending. That's what you fucking came up with. Jesus Christ. What a mess. But it turns out the Marvel guys didn't do that. They had a fucking plan that they knew all along the way it was going to work so they could get that. Dude, they did fucking DC did Man of Steel. They did. Uh, I don't even think Batman. I think Batman versus Superman was Zack Snyder's first Batman movie, if I remember correctly. And then they went right to fucking Justice Wonder Woman and then Justice League. But the Justice League has three other people in it. Like Flash and Aquaman, then they made an Aquaman movie after the fact. Oh, what a fucking mess. Anyway, 
but they decided they were just going to throw them all together into a movie. Like I said, Marvel spent like seven or eight movies letting, setting up the Avengers. These guys made two movies and went, here we go. Let's go. Justice League. Let's do it. Let's compete. And so I was like, oh, because Batman versus Superman is so fucking bad because there's this scene where Batman's f- mom's first name is Martha and Superman's mom's first name is Martha. And and Batman is beating up Superman and Superman says Martha. And then Batman's like, why did you say that name? And then they turn out to be friends because their mom has the same first name. And oh, also, they're having a huge fight that goes all over the city. And somehow Lois Lane finds them. It's just fucking it's just all of it's terrible. It's terrible. Batman versus Superman. It's a goddamn mess. It ended. I saw it at midnight in a theater and it ended and people just kind of sat there going, oh, man, like they just knew we all knew it was fucking trash. So that's when I said I was out. And then Justice League came down the pike and I'm like, oh, I got nothing to do with this. I'm not going to do it. And also Zack Snyder was in charge of. All right. So here's here's the inside baseball. That is common knowledge for fans. But if you don't know this, brace yourself. I'll just tell you this now. Justice League was going to be directed by Zack Snyder and Zack Snyder started to make Justice League and he was filming it. And, you know, they, they had the story and all this stuff. And then uh, Zack Snyder suffered an unimaginable personal tragedy. His his family was rocked by a uh, well fuck well, he doesn't listen to this his uh, his daughter committed suicide in the middle of him making this movie or plotting it filming whatever and he well he was devastated certainly so he had to tend to that but uh, you know tick fucking talk commerce stops for no man. So Warner brothers gave him some space and gave him some time, but then it turned out it might've been taking a little more time than they wanted it to. And I don't think there was any real issue where they were like angry at him. And I don't think he was angry at them. I think he basically just said, look, man, I can't do this. I mean, I I have so much personal work to do with my family and everything. And they said, okay. And I'm not even sure how much time passed, but then they turned to Joss Whedon. Now, if you know Joss Whedon, Joss Whedon made the first Avengers, I believe. He might have made the second one to Age of Ultron. I don't know. He might have. But I, whatever. Joss Whedon is, uh, I believe he's the Buffy the Vampire Slayer guy. And please don't yell at me. I, I don't I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I, I, as I get older, I'm forgetting things. So I'm pretty sure he's the Buffy the Vampire Slayer guy as well. Uh, and he, it, 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 so <laughs> let's put it this way. We used to know Joss Whedon as the guy who made the Avengers and Buffy, the vampire slayer. Now we know Joss Whedon as a horrible dictatorial director and sex pest, because it turns out he's a bad fucking guy. Of course, you know why? Because he's working in the movie industry and making money for the moguls. And so they'll let him do whatever the fuck he wants. So if he says, Hey, you know what? This movie's not going to work unless I'm three fingers deep in every female extra every single night. They're going to go. Certainly Joss, where do we send the check? Uh, it's unfortunate and it's sad and it's hopefully being reformed, but there's been a, a, a ton of terrible things that went on in Hollywood and in making movies and things like that. And whether it was directors bullying people or, or forcing people to fucking act a certain way, it's just, you know, whatever the fuck. Um, and also, by the way, I'm not Rona Barrett. I'm not on the fucking set, like <laughs> fucking clicking typewriter. <laughs> Ah, attention, Mr. And Mrs. America and all the steps and see. Here's Walter Winchell with the story about Hollywood. I don't fucking know. I just know what I've heard. And I'm not, I'm not like inside from anybody on the inside. I, I know what I read. I see stuff online. And, uh, and you just saw, you know, the Me Too thing happen. Everybody's getting fucking outed and terrible things are happening. So Joss Whedon, regardless, before all this happened, before, before, well, no, he was still in the middle of it before we knew. Let's put it this way. Before we knew he was a terrible guy. He took over Justice League. Now, he'd already made Avengers. Now, for me, I, uh, look, I get why they did it, because he'd already proven that he could do this kind of thing, where he could take a whole team of heroes and make a awesome, coherent movie out of it. Well, the problem is, you know, Snyder's already filmed a bunch of stuff, so he's got to work with what Snyder has and Snyder's script with this guy, Chris Oleo, I think was his name. But then Joss Whedon's like, nah, you know what? I'm going to bring, I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to Joss Whedon this up a little bit, man. I'm going to throw a little Whedon magic in here. I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look at people and I go, you know what? You just got Jossed. And so he's going to do some rewrites. So he starts rewriting the movie to the point where he like scraps a ton of shit that Zack Snyder had done. And then he decides basically the theme and the content of the movie. He, whatever, he does it his way. 
All right. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, you know, Zack Snyder is still away from the project and the fans are getting nervous because they're like, all right, we love and trust Joss Whedon. But there's also this DC Marvel rivalry where people have drawn a line in the sand and the DC people hate Joss Whedon because he worked for Marvel already. He made Avengers. So they're not going to give him a chance and they're pissed off at him. And then the Marvel people are like, I can't believe Joss Whedon would betray us by going off and doing Justice League. When in reality, it's uh, it's money. Nobody gives a fuck. Jesus Christ. I, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Fans are fans. And uh, and I do have to admit, I was a little weirded out when Joss Whedon took the gig, too. I won't lie. I was just like, this seems odd, even though I understand why he did it. So and why they hired him. I, because, again, experience doing it. So they get Joss Whedon and uh, he makes Justice League. Now, I don't see it. OK, I don't watch it. But I have my faithful friends, Kyle and Pat Dodson, who love comic book movies. And, you know, Pat loves Batman, as do I. You know, I love the Joker. I mean, it's just it's. Uh, they, they love all of these things. And so I didn't see it. And, uh, and then I asked Pat, oh, so Pat finally goes to see it. And I was like, uh, I go, Hey man, I said, uh, how was justice league? And he's just like, dude, and this is back again, four years ago or whatever. And he's like, dude, it's so fucking awful. I'm like, I knew it. I knew it would be because he goes, no man, it's just, it's fucking, it's terrible. It's so bad. Like you have no idea how bad it is. I'm like, no, I pretty much have an idea of how bad it was. You can't say that I don't because I paid to see Batman and Superman in the theater. And I was angry after it ended because I was like, I can't believe they're doing this. They're ruining this. How do you ruin characters like Batman and Superman? There, there, there have been 80 years of stories written about these guys. You can go through the comic books and find them. There's, there's no reason for you to not have source material for Batman and Superman. And again, like I said, there was no reason for them to jump to Batman fighting Superman. You should have made a couple of movies where Batman and Superman were friends and were fighting against Brainiac or fighting against the Penguin or, you know, teaming up to take on fucking Clayface. You know, there's there's enough villains in the rogues galleries for both of these guys to have to team up and go against people. And then Wonder Woman can show up and then she, I don't know her, any of her villains, but whatever the fuck. And then of course you can get, if the flash wants to be involved and the flash can fight reverse flash or captain cold or any of those guys. I mean, there's just, there's billions, not even, not even, well, that's an exaggeration. I'm, I was going to say that's not an exaggeration, but it's completely an exaggeration. Let's put it this way. There are hundreds of combinations you could have done. You could have made four other movies where they were all friends. Now they weren't a team yet, but they enjoyed working together. But then you could have the fucking conflict movie where Batman and Superman have a conflict and then they wind up fighting, but then they come together and then they form the Justice League, whatever the fuck. There's there's so many number of fucking things they could have done, but because they were impatient and wanted to steal as much money as they fucking could from the public and Marvel was eating their fucking breakfast. They went, you know what, man, we got to do this. So, uh, so Zack Snyder, personal tragedy, steps aside. Joss Whedon steps in. They make Justice League. And Pat tells me it's fucking terrible, right? So I don't watch it. But then there's this burgeoning rumor that there's something called the Snyder Cut. Everybody's like, oh, my God, release the Snyder Cut. You know what? Snyder, he, we want to see his version of Justice League. We must see it. The fanboys are like, it's going to be better. It's got to be great. We got to give Zack a chance. And again, there are people who hate Zack Snyder. So they're like, I don't want to fucking see the Snyder Cut. But there are people who are like, no, we must see it. We must see it because fans are completists. And they're like, we must see the Snyder Cut. And it became a meme. Release the Snyder Cut. Release the Snyder Cut. It became a fun thing online. Uh, but then it became a reality because it started getting a life of its own and people started to talk about it. And then Warner brothers might've noticed it. And then Zack Snyder said he was really interested in doing it. And then Warner brothers was like, okay, well, what do you think you'd do? And he's like, well, I have a great idea for it. And then they met and they gave him $70 million more to make the Snyder cut of justice league that people had been demanding that didn't really exist until they demanded it into an existence. And then he went ahead and decided he could make it. Does that make sense? So he, uh, he scripts it, he films it, he takes, you know, footage and he, and he, uh, and he makes the movie his way. He finally gets his opportunity. And by the way, this is after, you know, four years, I think he comes out of his shell of, of his family or three years he'd been away because of his family tragedy and he was finally ready to work again. So he started to talk about projects. Then the Snyder cut, like I said, took on a life of its own and he's like, I'm in. So it was the studio. So they give him $70 million and he goes ahead and he redoes justice league. And they announced that it's going to be coming out on HBO and they say it's going to be coming out in March of 2021 and people freak out. They're like, you got to be kidding me. What? So Pat's like, oh my God, are you going to watch the Snyder Cut? I go, dude, I didn't even watch fucking Justice League. I'm interested in the Snyder Cut, but I mean, it's, you know, I don't know. So then it comes out that the Snyder Cut's going to be four hours. <laughs> what? 
Yeah, Snyder makes a four-hour fucking movie. He makes a four-hour superhero movie, and everybody's like, this is fucking insane. First, there's rumors he's going to do four different one-hour episodes and make it like a series, but then he's like, nah, man, it's a sprawling epic. I want to make it this way. I want to make it, I want people to see it in my vision, whatever the, you know, and auteur bullshit, whatever the fuck. What do I know? I do a podcast on Sunday mornings. Uh, well, not every Sunday morning, hopefully. Um, so whatever, he's got it. He's got a vision. He's got drive and, and he's got 75 fucking million dollars. So he makes his movie and he, they say it's going to be four hours and people are like making fun of it. They're like, what the fuck? Then some clips come out where like, uh, there's a thing with Superman that people thought was going to happen and then they didn't think it would. And then there's a picture that leaks and it turns out it might, and nobody knows. And, and then some momentum is building and then the fans are excited and, uh, and I'm excited. I won't lie. I'm like, I'll watch the Snyder cut. And then Pat's like, he writes me a note. He's like, all right, dude, you're what? You're coming over and watching the Snyder cut the day it comes out. And I'm like, cool. I like that. He goes, but you got to watch justice league. I'm like, what? Why? He goes, cause then you can see what you're missing. I'm like, well, you know what? That makes sense. Why don't we watch them back to back at your house? He goes, well, because one is two hours long and one is four hours long. So I don't think we'll be able to watch six hours of movies at my house. And I, you know, I, what he doesn't understand is I would, I would go to his place and I would watch fucking 10 hours of fucking movies. I think it's awesome. But uh, again, daughters, uh, fucking uh, wife. So he's a very busy man. Podcast. So, uh, so he's like, all right, well just, you get the night before you got to watch the, or the week before you got to watch the Snyder cut. I go, well, I'll watch it the night before because I want to have it as close to the surface as possible. He says, great. So, uh, so folks, uh, forgive me. Now I told you, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do a lot of spoilers about the, uh, the Snyder cut. I'm going to talk about it in a second, but what I'm going to talk about though, and I'm going to spoil because it came out in 2000 fucking 17 is the movie justice league, which I wound up watching on Wednesday. And then, uh, and then Thursday was when I went, was to go to Pat's to watch the Snyder cut. Um, and look, I watched justice league and I'm just going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you it. There's so much stupid in it. There's so much stuff that you just, you look at it and you're like, why the fuck is this happening? What is going on? Like, and these are, these are characters I grew up with. I grew up with Batman. I grew up with Superman. I, I, I know who Flash and Wonder Woman are. I know who Aquaman is. He's a goof in the comics and, and a goof in fucking cartoons. But in this movie, he's Jason Momoa with 80,000 tattoos and flowing hair. And, you know, honestly, Jason Momoa should be Lobo, but let's not fucking discuss that right now. Um, so he plays Aquaman like Lobo. That's basically what he does. Lobo is another guy. Lobo is the DC Wolverine. You can always look at these dudes. There's always a counterpart. You know, you're like, oh, this guy's that guy. Oh, this guy's that guy. This guy's that. Oh, okay. Got it. Uh, you know, Plastic Man and Reed Richards, the Fanta- Mr. Fantastic. You know, there's always some doppelganger in each universe. Uh, so so I, I watched the Justice League movie and uh, I mean, dudes, I'm not. I'm not as skilled or or well versed in canon as a lot of people are. Okay, but I do know some stuff about these heroes and what they wouldn't wouldn't do. In Batman and Superman, Batman is killing people. He has guns on his fucking Batmobile and he's literally shooting men to death. And I'm like, that's that's not like the Batman that I knew. I didn't remember Batman killing anybody. He would fuck guys up with karate and shit. But uh, but to have actual fucking machine gun turrets on the Batmobile and to just shoot regular mobsters like if he's if he's shooting man bat, that's fine. I guess I can understand that. But uh, but for him to have to fucking blast these fucking guys named Rocco and shit like that, it's like, what's going on? Uh, But I so so I you know, when I watch this movie, you just get that eye where you're like, well, that wouldn't. And because I know it's, and look, I know it's dumb to go. Well, that wouldn't happen in a movie that Superman exists in. Yes, I understand. Superman's not real, but, but you can in your brain, you know, that when you see Superman, you're like, well, he wouldn't do that because he's fucking Superman. Batman wouldn't do that. I know he wouldn't. Why? Cause he's Batman. That's what he does. He has a code. He has a code that men follow. He has a code that bats follow. And he has a special code that only Batman follow. And he's one of them. God damn it. So I turn on this movie and it, it fucking, you know, Zack Snyder does this thing too, where he's overbearing with his music. Like he always has these on the nose music choices. He uses watch, uh, uh, which is in, in Watchmen. He uses hallelujah by Leonard Cohen for a sex scene in a spaceship. (laughs) 
I know it sounds so stupid. When you say it out loud, you're just like, like, look, I'll tell you what, we're fans of these movies, right? We're fans of the Avengers and shit like that. Can you imagine like being on the set with the Avengers and all these grown men are walking around in pajamas, getting craft services. They're in their trailer for seven hours in makeup, waiting to come out and be the Hulk. You're a grown man. <laughs> you went to fucking Juilliard. You went to fucking Juilliard, man. And now you got to step out of your trailer in fucking booty shorts and a cape <laughs> and go punch a ping pong ball on a stick. <laughs> And I know you're making thousands upon millions upon billions of fucking dollars. And there's nothing wrong with that, man. It's your career choice. But there had to be points. There had to be points for Robert Downey Jr. Or or Chris Evans. Ben Affleck's got two Oscars. Ben Affleck has an Oscar for writing and an Oscar for directing. And Ben Affleck's wearing a bat suit and, and running around with it and fucking changing his voice so he can sound like a gravelly superhero idiot. Oh, <laughs> And then there was that thing that became a meme where like they did the press tour and, and Affleck would just sit there with this blank look on his face because he hated it. He knew what it was. You know what I mean? He knew exactly what he was doing. And he fucking he got thrown into the fucking comic book meat grinder, did his best to fucking survive it. So I, I turn on Justice League and uh, and like I said, the music is, is he can have it be right on the nose. Uh, oh, that's what I was going to say, because Watchmen, the sex scene on a spaceship, it's this guy, Night Owl, and he has sex with this fucking, this, well, it doesn't matter, the guys, because Night Owl, Night Owl is like a Batman knockoff, at least like Batman and Superman and those guys, you know, they had comic books and stuff, if you're dressed like fucking Night Owl, you're like, who the fuck is Night Owl, why am I wearing a Night Owl suit, oh, I get to bang this chick to a Leonard Cohen song on my spaceship, <laughs> let's do it, oh, Christ, so, in Batman or in Justice League, I should say, he he uses another Leonard Cohen song like right away. There's a song called Everybody Knows by Leonard Cohen, but it's a different version. It's like a woman's version. And they're and it's a dirge, man. And and it, they're doing it as they pan over Superman, because Superman's dead in this movie because he died in Batman versus Superman. Spoiler alert, apologies. So he's dead in Justice League, and then he's like fucking there's a monument to his death in, in Metropolis. And then they, we, they, they show also the names of all the people who died in the battle that he died in. And they're on these stone monuments. And, a, and there's a statue of Superman that was destroyed in a fight. <laughs> and this is what I mean. Like, you can't you can't get too upset about it because you talk about it for five seconds and you just laugh because it's so stupid. But in Justice League, in the first five minutes, in the first five minutes, there's a scene where Batman is pursuing a criminal on a rooftop. And uh, and the criminal's played by the guy who played Bill Tench in Mindhunter. I was like, I was like, oh, Bill Tench is here. That's exciting. Uh, but as Batman is trying to wrap up this criminal, and uh, and he's he's uses his bat rope and the guy shoots at him a couple of times, he sees a sensor on his wrist, and it has like a infrared red dot. I don't fucking know. What do I know? And it turns out there's uh he sees something and he hang first of all, well, all right, let's put it this way. He has the bat rope around Bill Tench and he's hanging him off the side of the building and Bill Tench is like, no, don't let me go. As if Batman would ever let him go. And then Batman sees this thing on his wrist and then he yanks Bill Tench back and then a, a fucking out of nowhere, like a moth robot shows up. It, it looks, it does. It looks like a robot with a skull face and, but it's got moth wings or even like dragonfly wings and it's flapping around and then Batman tries to fight it and he grabs it and they jump off the building and they're tangling. And then Batman goes, it flies him to the other side and it's just whatever a bat, a bat fight happens, bat moth fight. And then it drops Batman back on the roof. Batman shoots it with a net, pins it to the wall. And then, uh, and then it, it freaks out and disintegrates. And he sees this pattern on the wall and he's talking to Alfred through his headset. And, it, and the criminal Bill Tench comes over and goes, what was that? And Batman's like, uh, I don't know, a special guest or something. He says something dumb. And the guy goes, from space? Like from an alien army? And, and I'm, we're five minutes in. Now, we don't, we don't know anything about space or an alien army. We, we don't know any of this shit. All right? We've not, all we've seen so far is Batman on a rooftop taking on a cat burglar. 
And, and for some reason, we're supposed to have a reference point to why there would be a, oh, Batman says it's a scout. That's what he says. The guy goes, what was that? And Batman goes, it was a scout. And the, and the criminal, the burglar who just stole a frying pan, who's not, he doesn't have any fucking knowledge. He doesn't have any fucking tracers or batarangs or a fucking cowl. He's just wearing cat burglar shit. And he just goes, a scout from space, like from an alien army. Why would that be your leap? Why would that be your go-to if you were this nobody burglar who literally just stole fucking three empty bottles of Jean Nate and a pearl necklace and you're leaving out the fucking top roof b- door, whatever the fuck, and you're fighting Batman? Why, why would you immediately go from space like from an alien? I mean, it just it made no fucking sense. And also, and look, I know you're going to say, well, in a, in a world with a Batman, why wouldn't you think it was from space? I guess so. I don't know. But it just seems so unnecessary to have that in the first five minutes to tip our hands that already, oh, you know, yeah, guess what? People from space are coming. Uh, and then Batman is just, you know, he's he's scowling and brooding. I don't, I don't know if it was a brooding scowl or a scowling brood. I don't fucking know. It was awful. It was just, just watching him do it was so bad. And then the movie takes off and then they're introducing everything. Because here's the problem. They've got to introduce everybody to us. They got to show us Wonder Woman and she has a fight in a museum. Then she destroys this whole museum just to tackle one guy. Then Aquaman shows up and first of all, Batman rides a, he rides a a fucking horse to a mountaintop to find Aquaman in some village in Iceland. And then he talks to Aquaman for five minutes. And then Aquaman goes to go back into the ocean and he takes off his sweaters. He is, he is Aquaman, rocket Aquaman bod. And, uh, but he leaves his jeans on. And he dives into the water. <laughs> Aquaman takes off his sweater to return to the sea, but leaves his jeans on. Look, man, if you're Aquaman, how are you not just fucking? Why isn't your flopper hanging out all the goddamn time? Why aren't you just you're just fucking dangling bait for every fish in the fucking sea? I would be bare ass naked, especially if I look like Jason Momoa. I would be fucking bare ass naked surfing in the sea. He doesn't need pants, but you know he's there. It's because the conceit of the PG-13 rating, they have to leave pants on Aquaman. Aquaman doesn't need fucking pants. Guy can do whatever the fuck he wants. But instead, he leaves his pants on and jumps into the fucking ocean. So bad. And then... They come together and and Wonder Woman's mad at Batman because Batman decides that he wants to bring Superman back from the grave. And in Justice League, Batman's a fucking doofus. Like nobody listens to him. They think he's kind of a dope. He doesn't have powers. so They all kind of like look down on him and make fun of him. And even he's like, yeah, well, you know, I I can't fly or anything, whatever. And it's just this. I don't want to see my Batman with a crisis of conscience. I don't want to see that at all. I want to see Batman who's ready to fucking murder dudes. That's the point. Maybe not murder, even though he's got the gun turrets on the fucking thing. But you know what I mean? I want a confident, badass Batman. But this fucking Batman is like, this Affleck is just like, well, duh, we need Superman. Because, you know, I, I don't think I could do it, Alfred. Anyway, I'm, you know, I he's all fucking worried and shit. It's just, I don't... I don't need to see Woody Allen Batman, all right? Nobody wants to see that. Here's the thing. The Joker, he doesn't understand that, you know, I have an appointment at 9.30 and he goes ahead and he commits these crimes. I have to cancel. It costs me because I have to pay the fee. Shut up, Woody Allen fucking Batman. Uh, so, that, so they get together as a team. Then there's this guy, Cyborg, and he was like a high school kid or a college kid, and then he was in an accident, and then his dad hooked him up to a machine and turned him into a robot. <laughs> You're just like, what's happening? But again, the bad part, here's the real bad part. The movie justice league, they have to jam all these fucking guys in there to show you what they're doing. We have to get all of the conflict. We have to get, we have to get Batman to try to assemble the team. He's got to talk to Aquaman. He's got to get Wonder Woman on board and then cyborg. And then he's got to find the flash and get the flash involved and convince the flash to trust Aquaman. And Wonder Woman's got to trust the flash. And they all got to trust him, but then he wants to raise Superman from the dead. So they have these things called mother boxes. And then also the space aliens, you know, the moth robots, they're, they're really from space and they show up with this guy named Steppenwolf and they, and for, again, this is where it all falls apart. Again, they want to take over the world for, for why nobody knows. Like there's no, they don't even say, like I've talked about the Terminator too, where the Terminator robots are like, we're going to kill all the humans. Dun, 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 dun. And it's like, oh my God, Skynet is self-aware and Cyberdyne systems and what's going to happen. And then the Terminators are fighting and John Connor lost and, oh wait, the robots have finally won the war. Yay. And now lunch. I mean, like what's their fucking end goal? 
So they, they kill all the humans and then the planet's there. And then what? Who's going to shine up their fucking chrome? I don't get it. It's just this whole thing about, I just want power. Well, what power? When you kill all the humans, then you run the planet. So what? What are you going to do? Then you get other robots around. You're going to argue about bullshit? Start a fucking robot euchre league? What the fuck? Unreal. So, and that's what's happening in this fucking movie. They're like, we got to bring fucking Superman back from the dead. And there are these mother boxes that Steppenwolf is trying to find. And, and look, man, there's a couple of decent fight scenes, but also there's a bunch of lame humor, like a bunch of bad jokes. And the fucking flash is, is like aspie. He's on this fucking spectrum. And it's like, why the fuck would you make that choice? Cause in the comic books, flash, I think is, I think his name is Barry Allen. And he's like an older dude who might be a reporter, just like fucking Clark Kent. Again, they ran out of a lot of ideas at DC, uh, these guys are both reporters. Um, so they, they come up with a plan where they, they got to bring Superman back from the dead and wonder woman's mad. She doesn't want to do it, but Batman says they have to fucking do it. So then they have to sneak into this military base that has a, that has the Kryptonian ship from the fucking Batman versus Superman, which is where Lex Luthor summons Steppenwolf. Oh my God. So they go in and they've got to they've got to drop the box into the primordial. Ooze. Oh, first of all, they got to dig up Superman. By the way, that is a completely true thing. They literally go rob Superman's grave, and and they they dig up his casket at the funeral at the fucking graveyard. There's nobody nobody stops him. They dig up his fucking grave, and then they and they throw his coffin on a truck. It's like fucking weekend at Superman's. They throw him on a fucking truck. They go to this military base. Now the Flash is going to sneak in and Cyborg is going to hack into the fucking computer. So they give the Flash a military. The Flash, first of all, now has a full military uniform. I don't know where he's found it, but it fits him perfectly. And then it's got the name stitched on it. And then the Cyborg goes ahead and taps into the government computer. But here's the thing. They give they show it on screen. They run the ID. And the date of birth for the Flash on this ID is like November of 2010. So the Flash, the Flash, as he's breaking into the military, it, it, the military fucking border, he's fucking seven years old. He's seven years old. Uh, <laughs> because he was issued it in, uh, in 2015. So he was five when he joined the military. Now he's breaking out of the base when he's seven. But it works because Cyborg does a little fucking Cyborg magic and they break in. And I, and, and I look. I, I, I can suspend my disbelief for a lot of, a lot of things. I really can. I'm telling you, I can go, oh, okay, I get that. Oh, that makes sense. But when you just, when there's so much shit piled on itself, you're just like, what the fuck is going on? It doesn't make any sense. So they break in, they take Superman, they put him in the fucking primordial ooze. They push him down. They drop a mother box. The flash gives it an electric charge. Superman comes back from the dead. Now he's back from the dead. He's literally been dead. I don't even know how long it is. I don't know when the events, it might be a week after fucking Batman versus Superman. I got no clue, but it, it's long enough that Superman has been in a coffin underground and now he bursts out of the ooze and then they go outside and he's, he's, uh, He's a little scrambled. Superman's a little fucking scrambly. So uh, he winds up fighting Aquaman, Flash, and Wonder Woman. And uh, and everybody kept saying to Batman, what the fuck happens if he's like crazy when he wakes up? And he's like, don't worry, I got a plan. I got a plan. Batman's got a fucking plan. So they, and, and this is the honestly the best part of Justice League for me, is unvarnished Superman, where he's he's just a fucking killing machine because he is truly the most powerful being in our galaxy, you know what I mean? And so in the movies, they always find a way to soften him up and make him a fucking pussy. But now he's fucking unvarnished. He comes out of the ground. He comes out of the primordial ooze. He's ready to fuck things up. He's beating Wonder Woman's ass. He's beating fucking Cyborg and the Flash. There's a great scene where the Flash tries to run behind him and he follows him with his eyes and the Flash can't fucking believe it because he's so fucking fast. And whatever, he's whipping the shit out of them. And then Batman shows up like 10 minutes later because Batman, by the way, has been trapped underground. And why, when I say trapped underground, I mean, he doesn't fly. So like everybody else flew up to confront Superman. I just picture Batman in his bat suit having to wait for an elevator. It's so fucking stupid. Why else would it take him so long to fucking get out there? So then he goes outside. And when he shows up, Batman sees him or Superman sees him and makes a fucking face because he remembers him. That's the guy who killed him for fuck's sake. So he attacks him. He lifts Batman in the air by his fucking neck. There's bad fucking back and forth, you know, repeating of lines and shit. And Batman's trying to convince him the world needs you. He's getting choked. 
and uh, Superman is freaking out. He's about to, he throws Batman into a fucking truck or a, or a cop car. But then <laughs> here's Batman's plan. A car pulls up and the door opens and Lois Lane gets out of the car. And she's in the car with Alfred. It's a Maybach, by the way. Am I saying that right? Maybach, Maybach. And she gets out and she goes walking over and she's like, Clark. And by the way, they're also calling Superman Clark in front of all these cops and these military dudes. Now, they all know that fucking Superman is Clark Kent. Everybody knows it. They play fast and loose with the fucking secret identities in all of these movies. So Clark lands. He looks at Lois and Lois is like, oh, no, please. And and so then he he winds up hugging her and holding him to her, his bosom. And then she's like, let's go, let's go. And, uh, and so they fly away. So then everybody looks at fucking Batman and the flash is all fucked up because he's running around super fast. By the way, also, there's another thing. The flash is so goddamn fast that the only way they can show you how fast the flash is, is by constantly showing the flash in slow fucking motion. They, they're like, Oh, look how fucking fast this guy is. He's so fast. We have to show it to you super slow. What are you doing? So. Superman flies off with Lois and uh, and I'm immediately mad because I'm like, wait a minute, you're not going to turn him into a pussy again. He's just out of the grave. He was just killing Machine Superman. Don't puss him out now. And uh, then the heroes are like, what a way to go, Batman, whatever the fuck. And then Steppenwolf is getting his minions and they're going to attack and all these terrible things. And then we cut to Smallville, Kansas. And that's where Superman went. He lands in a field. At his old at his mom's house, the house he grew up in, and uh, and Lois is holding his hand, and they're walking and and talking, and then later on, Superman is by himself, wandering through a field, just pining and sad, like fucking nineteen eighty eight Bono. The whole world is falling apart, but he doesn't care. And then Lois comes out, and she then plays the victim, and she's like, "I wasn't strong while you were gone. I wasn't Lois Lane, dedicated reporter." And he's like, "That's okay, Lois. Uh, I was an idiot. I I left, but I'm back now." And it's like, man, you know what? Why is Superman the king of the fucking simp's? What are you doing to this fucking guy? Can you stop making Superman a goddamn pussy and let him fuck some guys up, please? Uh, so she's got to convince Superman that possibly they need him to save the goddamn Earth. And then Superman's like, yeah, maybe. And then uh, you know, and I, I look, it just, it all, then there's a fight, of course, with Steppenwolf, a climactic bullshit thing. And, and, and it's awful. It's so terrible. And, and I, it ends and I'm just like, my God, was that awful? Cause it's two hours, it's two hours long, just about on the nose. And they just spend so much time shoving in exposition and trying, it's just this breakneck pace. Imagine introducing six heroes forging their relationship, making them form a team. And then they have to fight a bunch of guys from space who are coming to destroy the earth. Like I, I just, it's too fucking much. So when the movie ends, everybody's laughing, you know, cause they're like the Snyder cut is four hours. And once the two hour version ends, I'm like, you know what? Honestly, what this movie needs is another hour. Like it, if you, you absolutely needed at least another hour to tell this story. So now I'm like, well, the Snyder cut makes sense at four hours, right? That could, that fucking works. Uh, so now I'm, I'm, I'm like, all right, well, I'll give it a shot and we'll see how it goes. But I mean, this fucking justice league, it ends. It's so it's corny and bad. And the, and the jokes are all, it's just bad. It's just this weird tone where like Batman's kind of joking around with everybody. Batman doesn't fucking joke with anybody. It's, it's, uh, but I'm staring at it. And I'm like, I never thought I would think this, but this movie needs another hour. Like it absolutely needed another hour. And I look, did I want a Joss Whedon hour? I don't fucking know. But now I'm prepared to watch the Snyder cut at Pat's house the next day. And uh, I show up at his place at seven and he, he hits play and we end. Look, man, it took us six hours to get through a four hour movie because the way Pat and I watch a movie, they've got his little pause and we'll discuss it. And we were also picking out what was different from the first movie. So Zack Snyder, I, I, and again, I don't want to spoil anything. There is a lot of stuff from the initial justice league movie footage and stuff like that, that he uses, but he provides it with context. He, he shows you why these people are feeling this way and doing these things. And what is it's you're watching it and you're just thinking to yourself, Oh, this makes sense. Oh, this makes sense. Now look, does he jerk off a bunch in the Snyder cut? Oh my God. Yes. More slow motion, more Leonard Cohen. I mean, it's 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 all there. All of his fucking, 
nonsense, I guess you'd say, the Snyder nonsense that you're used to getting is in the Snyder Cut. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you this, man. It's good. And I mean, it's not just good. Like it's, well, first of all, it's, it's a million times better than the Justice League movie. I mean, it's just, if anything, it makes Joss Whedon look like an idiot for the, for, for the fucking tone he had, he had adopted for it and, and all the stuff that he did and the plot choices, it, it's all bad. The initial one, I would recommend, I'd literally watch them back to back over a couple days. <laughs> you don't have to watch six hours in a row. But then the Snyder Cut, like, and again, like I said, there's a bunch of dumb shit in the Snyder Cut. Uh, there's a scene again, the scene where Superman comes back, a cop pulls a gun and it's like, really? You, it's fucking Superman. What are you going to do? And also how do you fucking have any idea? Like this cop is in Metropolis. He doesn't know who Aquaman is, but Aquaman's there fighting Superman. Wouldn't you shoot Aquaman in the fucking head? But instead you're going to fucking, you're mad at Superman. Now the guy with the guardian of fucking Metropolis, actually Jesus who saved you how many goddamn times? Uh, but man, it was, it was. We watched it. it again. It took six hours to watch a four hour movie, but it was worth it. And, and it worked. And there's an, and look, all right, look, <laughs> there's nonsense in it. There's an epilogue. I'm not going to spoil things. I'm not going to tell you things about the movie other than to tell you that it does an incredibly good job of explaining the motivations behind these characters. It gives you more about their origins and it explains to you why they are the way they are and why they team up to do the things they need to do. It makes sense. And it loses a bunch of the lame comedy. And it, it makes the villain have motivations and it makes him scarier looking. It just it's just it made sense. And I and what's funny, I've talked about how keep in mind I want to like things. All right, absolutely. I want to like things. So perhaps I'm being clouded by that because I've seen a ton of people who hate it and, and it's frustrating to me because I wonder if those people were just waiting to make fun of it, no matter what, like no matter what came out, no matter what it proved to be, they're going to dunk on it. They're going to make their joke. They're going to, they're going to laugh. They're going to, you know, again, cause there's, there's tons of of hot buttons with Zack Snyder, the slow motion and the, and all of it, it's all there. Yes. You can make fun of it if you want, but if you look at it in the abstract and like I said, I, I'm sure it's because I'm old now, but I look at this as a triumph in this guy's career. Now, yes, he's a rich, successful multi-million dollar worth director. He's made movies, he's won awards, but in making this movie, he was hit by the most devastating of personal tragedies. And he made it through that. And then he was able to get the opportunity to go back and work on the project he was working on, which, by the way, he was working on it when this tragedy happened. So it had to echo in his mind every time he tried to do something. He had to think of her because, again, the movie ends and the title card just comes up and it says for Amanda, I believe it is, who's his daughter. And then there's a song over the credits that is her favorite song. And it's performed by a woman who performed it at her service. So there's meaning in here for this guy. And I think we we find ways. And I do it too, man. I did it earlier in the show. I'll do it next week too. I might even do it in the next 10 minutes. We have ways of just making fun of things and, and burning things to the fucking ground and and dunking on stuff. Because that's the default now. The default is comedy for everybody in the fucking world. The default is, uh, you know, comedy or snarky or jokey. And, uh, and nobody, nobody wants to have feelings or like something because they're worried they'll get made fun of for liking it. I mean, everything just, but, but then, you know, then people who do like things, uh, then they get angry because other people are liking them too. And it was, it belonged to them. I mean, it's just, it's just a, it's a weird boolia base of feelings. There's such proprietary ownership of, of content and characters and memories and experiences. And people get defensive and rather than share them with other people and go, Oh, don't you like this? I like it too. They're worried they're going to get made fun of. So they become insular and they think only they like it and nobody else should like it and nobody else should be sharing it. And it's just, 
It's so fucking weird, man. Everything is weird. Everything has gone fucking off the goddamn deep end, right? And uh, and and I I gotta tell you, it's worth seeing. And I I really would watch Justice League first and then watch the other one next. Now, look, do I say this because I have all the time in the world? Yes, you probably have a life. <laughs> you have daughters and wives and sons and husbands and kids and whatever the fuck. And I get that, man. But if you've got six hours to kill, it's a fun double feature to watch over a couple of days. And, and get this, if you only have the four hours, well, you can watch the Snyder Cut and release yourself from the, the, the unbelievably terrible curse of having to watch the first Justice League, which I did. I, I had it in my rearview mirror. I would have never watched the goddamn thing if Pat didn't recommend that I do it for homework. And, uh, and I'm glad he did because then I was able to see the differences. We were able to pick out this and that, and, and you can see the, the changes Snyder made and the tone that he wanted to bring compared to Whedon's tone and, and Whedon, there's these jokes, man, this guy's just a 12 year old boy. Like all of his jokes are just, they're, they're like little kids in a treehouse with a flashlight and a playboy or something. And they're not that they're dirty or smutty, but they're just. They're just kids trying to be adults. They're your kids jokes masquerading as adult banter. And they're it just, man, did it fall flat for me. And then Snyder goes the other route where he's just the, the flip side of the coin where it's just all humorless melodrama with a little bit of a wink and a nod here and there, but not fucking much, man. He plays it straight for four goddamn hours. And, uh, and I preferred that. I prefer my, I think I prefer my entertainment without the wink and the nod these days. I think, uh, I think give it to me straight. You know what I mean? I I think because the entire world is elbowing you in the ribs and trying to make sure you get it, that I much prefer somebody who lets me get it on my own, doesn't lead me down a primrose path and goes, ha, huh, ha, huh, right? Well, how funny are these guys? How funny is Batman? Not only is Batman an ass kicker, but he's hilarious. This Aquaman, right? King of the fish, huh? But also on land, hilarious. I don't need fucking Aquaman to be hilarious. I don't need him to be doing fucking sarcasm. I don't need the Flash to be, uh, you know, fucking uh, autistic. I, I, you know, just these are just such odd. Just give me, give me a straight ahead bullshit Mount Rushmore superhero movie for four fucking hours, and I'm gonna watch it every goddamn time. You guys can get me at Mike and Mike Schmidt Comedy dot com. You guys can be my friend at Facebook dot com slash the forty year old boy. You can follow me at twitch.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can be my friend as Facebook. Yes, I said that you can be uh, I've, I've got Instagram. I've got Snapchat. Did I mention those? I think I did. I've got Instagram. I've got Snapchat. I've got TikTok. I'm Mike four zero Y O B at all of those goddamn places. Uh, follow me there. You know, it's funny. I just did. <laughs> what did we talk about? I didn't. I talked about a movie forever, but and I know we've but isn't it isn't it fucking great? Honestly, when you think about it, uh, you know, because I've talked about it's terrifying to reenter the real world and you don't want to do this and you're scared and who know. And then and then, man, I, I got to be honest, I you know, I, I'm worried to do these things, but it sure as hell beats the alternative of not having to worry about doing anything. And to be able to just jerk off here and talk about a movie for 40 minutes. Oh, well, I don't know if you cared for it, but God damn, did I love it. To not have to sit here and talk about what the fuck is going on in the nation's capital or any of that bullshit. I'm glad to miss it. Miss me with that, man. Someone's yelling. My neighbor's yelling. Is he yelling at me? I hope not. <laughs> this will be bad. <laughs> I should mention, it's uh, it's 5.45 a.m. And I've been talking for I don't know how fucking long, so... <laughs> He's been asleep, but now if he's emerging from his cocoon, he's going to hear me and be like, what the fuck, man? Uh, I'll have to get close to the microphone now. Oh, my God. Hold on. Let me rinse my mouth. All right. I'll drink some water. Maybe they'll take all the uh, the the nastiness out. Who knows? Uh, all right. You guys can get me at Mike at Mike Schmidt com. You can be my friend at Facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can follow me at Twitter.com slash the 40 year old boy. Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Mike 40 YOB. I'm there to be found. Find me and love me. I'm great. Follow me. I'm cool. None of these things are true. Well, you can find me there, but I'm not cool. Let's put it that way. I am so uncool, but still here to be followed. Follow my uncoolness. Why not? Why wouldn't you do that? See if I can evolve into a cool person at some point. Nope, I can't. 
Uh, hey, Ryan Dirks is the web guy. Thanks, dude. Glad for the stuff you've done. Casey Bills handles the YouTube stuff when I contact him. Thanks, dude. Hope you're good. I should probably write you an email at some point. Uh, and of course, our good friend David Hernandez does all of the artwork and music for this show in the past. He just uh, did a bunch of stuff. You know, you can go check it out. Go to Facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez and become his friend. Go to his photos. You'll see his artwork that he's done for people, artwork he's done for me. He's done a, He used to do a bunch of my timeline photos. You know, he hasn't done them for a while here, but you can go find them. And like I said, on his in his photos, his uh, he did all the, uh, the artwork for the West Side 86 Jokers page for a long time. Uh, he was great when he was doing all that. So he's, he's great now, certainly. But I mean, he was doing all those things. You can go find them in his artwork and stuff like that. Go to his photos and, and browse and check the artwork out. He's done for people. He can do artwork for you as well. I'll get to that in just a second, though. Uh, but in addition to doing music and artwork for this podcast, uh, you know what? Here's what the man has. He has a closed group on Facebook that you can join. What? Yes, he does. It's called This is Dumb, That's Dumb, You're Dumb, I'm Dumb. If you become his friend at Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez, and then you'll see the group, and then you can join the group, and then you can uh, point and fingers and laugh at everybody who likes Jesus and other things. It's, uh, it's a fun group, one you should be a part of. Why not? Step right up. Step right up. And don't be shy because you will not believe your eyes. Join his group right now. And then also, he's got a podcast. What? Yes, he does. That's loud. I'm going to wake my neighbor up. Uh, he does a podcast called The Flem Cat Podcast. And that's two words, Flem Cat. P-H-L-E-G-M-C-A-T. The Flem Cat Podcast is available right now wherever podcasts are sold. You can find it in the Apple podcast space, the iTunes store, probably at Stitcher and Spotify, wherever you want to do it. Just, you know what? Go to the podcast and put in phlegm. I'm betting no other podcast comes up when you put in the word phlegm, P-H-L-E-G-M, and there you'll find Max doing music, doing soggy bottom stuff with fucking uh, Snagglefuck the Weird and all these other dudes, man, singing songs and uh, and just killing it on his podcast called the Flem Cat Podcast, available now, right now, in the iTunes store, in the Apple Podcast space. Go ahead and grab it and uh, and download all of them. Subscribe. Don't just fucking download it. Subscribe to the goddamn thing. If you want to rate or view in the iTunes store, you can do that, too. It'll make him fucking super happy and me as well. And uh, And that's the best. So look out for David and his fucking podcast, the Flem Cat podcast, available now in the iTunes store. And uh, and as I mentioned, he did all the artwork for my show for a very long time and also for the fan club page. Well, I'll tell you what, he can do artwork for you, too. What? Yes. Um, we just had St. Patrick's Day. What's next? Fucking Easter? Good Friday? You want some artwork for that? He'll do it. He'll paint whatever you want him to paint. He'll draw whatever you want him to draw. He'll sculpt whatever you want him to sculpt. He can make it work. He works in all sorts of uh, uh, materials. He can do oil paints. He can do watercolors. Whatever you need from him, he can do. You want him to paint your dogs? You want him to paint your kids? You want him to paint your wife naked? You want him to draw you like one of his French girls? He can fucking do all of that stuff. Uh, but what you got to do is you got to hire him. You got to go ahead and find him. Like I said, if you go ahead to his Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez, you will see all of the artwork he's done in the past for people. And you'll be like, holy Jesus, that's stuff I want. Uh, or you can actually go to his website. And check out a whole different style of art that he's done in other uh, in other areas. Yeah, that's right. In other areas. I don't know what that means, but he's done them. And he's got a website. Just the bottom line is you got to check out the website. Not only Facebook, but go check out the website. Uh, it's available and waiting for you right now with open arms and open legs, as our friend Roger Daltrey would say, at artbydmh.com. That's A-R-T-B-Y-D-M-H dot com. Cancer isn't free. And the challenges don't end when treatment is finished. For cancer survivors in their 20s and 30s, the stacks of medical bills, empty savings accounts, and time away from work can be catastrophic. No one should have to choose between seeing their doctor or keeping the lights on, or make the decision to skip their medication because they need to feed their families. Yet these are the choices that too many young adult cancer survivors make every day, and COVID-19 has added an extra layer of financial stress and uncertainty. The SAM Fund and Expect Miracles Foundation have provided over $2.5 million in grants to young adults across the country, but the need is greater than ever due to the pandemic. Please join us in supporting their efforts by making a donation to Expect Miracles Foundation's SAM Fund program today. To learn more or make a donation, visit thesamfund.org. That's thesamfund.org. Welcome to the Mexicans Rock and Roll Limbo, where the lost souls of rock royalty pay tribute to the 40-year-old boy. 
Schmidt, he's five years old, into show and tell he strolled. Nobody ever told him it's the wrong way. No, it's not cool, brought a bullet into school. Who you think you're gonna fool? It's the wrong way. He ain't too smart for the school he attends, so he's gonna read porn to his friends. Salty tears running down to my chin. Keys, she now is me. 
gravy So no turkey, no stuffing And now no wife And the house, it smells like Thursday Position that I could seek refuge in George Arnold's house. Seek refuge in George Arnold's house. Seek refuge in George Arnold's house. You cannot seek refuge in George Arnold's house! Shit out of these drums, dude. Hi there, I'm Jimmy Pardo, host of the award-winning podcast Never Not Funny. It's a show that's been described as hanging out with friends you never knew you needed. Well, each week I get together with my co-host Matt Belknap and great people from the worlds of comedy, Broadway, music, TV, movies. You get the point. Hey, Matt, uh, give me some examples of who we've had on. Oh, my God, Jimmy. We've had comedy legends like Conan O'Brien, Amy Poehler, and Sarah Silverman. Hollywood royalty like Rob Reiner and John Hamm. And members of classic rock bands like Styx and Kiss. Hey, Never Not Funny's been around since 2006, so we must be doing something right. So why not join our nonsense each week? Never Not Funny. The fastest hour in podcasting. Hey, we have sponsors, uh, which you know about, and but I will get to the sponsors in a second because I have a personal announcement. Seems like as good a place as any to do it here on a podcast, right? It's my podcast. I'm the guy talking, as I've mentioned many times. Uh, and again, like I said, year 13 of this podcast, you don't get a lot of personal announcements or, or let's go the other way. Every single episode is a personal announcement. So uh, I should tell you this. Um. In, or here's the thing. I should have mentioned this earlier in the show, but also it's a thing where I was like, well, maybe I'll close the show with this. But I mean, I don't I got to tell you fucking now and just tell you, shut up. Uh, here's what I'm doing, guys. As I've mentioned, you know, uh, things are changing. I hope going forward to the next few months, it's going to be crazy here. And uh, I'm hoping by the summer, all of us are vaccinated or moving toward that. What do I know? I don't have a fucking hotline into the government. But I'm sure when Joe Biden isn't falling downstairs, he's going ahead and taking care of business. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you saw Joe Biden fall down, I, I'll just talk about this now. If you saw Joe Biden fall downstairs, um, it didn't look good, right? I mean, it just, it just because he didn't just, he didn't stumble. He, he like fell like four times. 
He just it it looked like uh, sideshow Bob stepping on rakes. It looked like a guy stepping on a whole bunch of fucking banana peels. I mean, he just he just kept going down, and then people kind of made fun of it because that's what people do these days. And everybody got mad. They're like, oh, I can't believe you'd make fun of him. You know, he, was, he just slipped. What about the other guy? He used to slip all the time. And it's like, well, no, no, you can't. You can't spend four years making fun of dick fuck because he couldn't drink a glass of water without clutching it to his goddamn face like like a fucking oxygen mask. And then when the other idiot falls down the stairs, you, you know, you can't go, well, he's a normal guy. He's a, he's in terrific shape. He, and shut up. Quit defending these idiots. Guy fell down the fucking stairs. It's funny. Three studios used to do it all the fucking time. Biden should have a pie fight. He really wants to fucking crack me up. Go ahead and do that. But it's so funny when people are just like, well, you you don't understand. He jogs. He's on a Peloton and he's got four dogs. And I, so what? So fucking what? He's the fucking president. Do some president shit. And if you fall down the stairs when you're the president, it's going to look stupid. Remember when we all made fun of fucking dopey because he had to hold a general's hand to walk down a ramp? And everybody's like, ha ha, he's so scared of the, the fucking ramp in the stairs. Ha ha, what a puss. Uh, okay, great. He's a puss. And then fucking Joe Biden pulls a Chevy chase and falls down 80 fucking staircases. The only thing he needed was four hot fudge Sundays to be in a goddamn Sesame Street sketch. And everybody's just like, well, you can't make fun of him for that. He's uh, all of us trip at one time or another. Yeah, fine. But you made fun of the other guy for four fucking years because he's and, and rightfully fucking so. So guess what? <laughs> I got news for you. Your boy better fucking walk upstairs and not fall down because people are going to just waiting to make fun of his ass. All right, what am, why, why am I even going into this? Uh, here's the dumb announcement that I keep putting off. It's not a dumb announcement. It's dumb to keep putting it off. Uh, guys, last year, as I've mentioned earlier in the show, certainly, I had shows planned. I was coming to Canada to do a show last year, as I always do. I was going to be doing shows in Ireland. Uh, I had plans to go and try to book shows throughout the country because I was going to return to the stage and try to do a CD by the end of the year. And, uh, and uh, all of that went to hell because a germ came and then a lockdown happened and then we're all wearing masks. And, and look, I don't need to recap the last year for you, do I? But what I do need to tell you is that, uh, as I mentioned last week, I've wasted a whole lot of time and I don't think I have a lot of time left. Um, you know, 25 years or so, 22 years, maybe <laughs> I hope Although again, like I said, I've, I've eaten myself into a situation where who the fuck knows what'll happen. But the bottom line is it's time for me to start doing things. And I say that on here all the time and you know, this and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, the bottom line is I'm doing something. So July 8th, July 9th and July 10th, I will be in Rosemont, Illinois at the Zanies comedy club with my brother, Lenny. Uh, Lenny will be closing. Obviously I'm just middling. Um, it, it just kind of came together because Lenny, I, I picked him up from the airport and, uh, and we were driving and, and he got a text from the girl who runs Zanies now. And so he had to call and he, he fucking, whatever, he booked a gig and he hung up and I, and as I, I dropped him off at his house, I thought about it on the ride. And then I thought to myself, you know, um, I, I, maybe that could, cause I haven't been, a, I haven't played Zanies in years. I got banned from Zanies because I was late to a show. It's a long story. Uh, but the guy who runs Zanies or who ran Zanies retired. So there's a new person in charge and Lenny, they love him. So I said, Hey, is there a way uh, I could maybe do Zanies with you? Cause he's actually there for two weeks. He's in Rosemont and then he's in downtown. Now I would love to go downtown, but I can't, I can't make it work to go to Chicago for two weeks. It's just, that's just a lot of time. Cause I'm staying at Mex's house and renting a car and this, that, and the other. And it's just, uh, and also the money, I'll tell you this. Uh, I asked him about it. He said, sure. And then he wrote me and he told me what the money was. Now I assumed I was not going to make a dime. I mean, whenever I do these things, as I've talked about before, they're kind of a lost leader to go out on stage. Um, especially this, because I haven't been on stage in forever. So I was willing to take the hit just to get the stage time and get out there. And also to go back to Chicago and to go see Max. Cause it's been a year since I've seen fucking David and, and Kristen and the kids and, and to see whomever I can see when I'm there. Um, but also it's important for me to get back on stage and, uh, and, and as much as I wanted to do two weeks there, I had to shorten it to the eighth, the ninth and the 10th because when he told me what the money was, I, cause I, I know what I used to make back in the nineties when I would middle. Well, it's, it's even less than that now. Like, I mean, and here's why, because they can book local people to do those gigs. So those guys, you know, they'll, they'll do them on the cheap because they're just trying to get stage time at Zany's and whatever. And it makes sense, I guess, in the business abstract. But for me, I, you know, it's, it's, it's a ridiculously bad 
pointless amount of money. So I, I figured out an amount for two weeks. I'm like, well, you know what? If it's that, that'll eat up whatever I've got to pay for a car and for food. And I, I thought I was going to get an Airbnb because with the pandemic, I don't know if I can stay at David's. <clears throat> but then it turned out that the money was was almost half of what I figured it was going to be. Like, which is crazy. It's a little over half of what I thought it would be for two weeks. And I, I just, I couldn't pull it off. I'm like, that's just, that's a ridiculous, that's two weeks of making nothing. That's just ridiculous. The amount of cash that they're paying. It's terrible. So instead I shortened it and I'm going to be in town for a week and I'm going to do the eighth, ninth and 10th at Zany's in Rosemont. Uh, I don't know if tickets are on sale now. They probably are, but it'll be me and Lenny and then whomever else is in town, some other opener guy. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing yet. I don't have any clue what I will do because, again, we talk about terrifying. We talk about weird. We talk about strange. It's going to be very strange for me because I haven't done shows for people who don't know who I am in a very long time. And I don't say that arrogantly. I say that I've been booking my shows when I went to Cincinnati or these other places. I would book these small theaters and the people who came to the show knew who I was because I sold the tickets. They were familiar with this show. But at Zany's. It's just going to be people who wander in. You know what I mean? They're not going to have any fucking clue who I am. Now, they might be there to see Lenny. And look, there'll be plenty of people who went to school with and people that I know who are coming to check out Lenny and me. That'll be cool. Um, but I don't know what material I'm doing yet. I, I don't know if I'll tell stories. I don't know if I'll do regular stand-up. I don't know. Uh, I got to figure it out. But there'll be shows the 8th, the 9th, and the 10th. Probably uh, one show on Thursday, the 8th. Probably two on Friday. Maybe three on Saturday. But it might just be two. I don't know. But tickets will be available for you to go check it out. And uh, and it might even be a thing where, like, if you guys come to two shows on the same night, maybe I'll switch it up and do different material each show. Because I'm only doing probably 30 minutes each show. Uh, and I can, I can fucking wing that, right? I will not wing it, but you know what I mean? Have different material for each show. Uh, and I'm looking at it as kind of an experiment. You know, I'm going to go up and see if I can tell stories and, and what it would work like in a club. And regardless, so July 8th, 9th, and 10th. In Rosemont, Illinois, I will be at Zany's with my brother. Uh, I'm only doing 30 minutes a night, 30 minutes a show. <clears throat> and uh, and if if you're in the neighborhood, if you're in Chicago, that's cool. If you're anywhere near there in the summer and you want to pop by, that's cool as well. And please, I understand nobody can travel. The pandemic, I, I'm not telling people they have to come. Well, fuck this. Why am I doing this? I'll just tell you this. I'm going to be there July 8th, 9th, and 10th. I would love to see as many of you as I possibly can uh, who can make it out there for the shows. If you can't, no problem. I will eventually be in your town because my plan is to get back on the road and start doing shows in theaters and uh, start building again. Let's try to make that CD happen. Let's do whatever we can to move forward and make it work and try to get, uh, you know, again, I got <laughs> what have I got 10 years left. It's going down every time I talk. What do I got? 10 years left. I can't believe I've only got eight years left. What am I going to do for the next six years? Uh, I, I would love to have you guys there. And then eventually you'll see me in other places. Like I said, I want to schedule bits and gigs and bits. I want to schedule gigs in other towns. But um, right now, I can tell you for sure that July 8th, 9th, and 10th, I'll be in Rosemont, Illinois at the Zanies in Rosemont with my brother. And uh, you can get tickets or you can come out or, or uh, whatever. And also, we'll hang, man. If you want to come out, go to the shows. We'll go get some pizza after. Um, looking forward to it. If you can make it out there, that's great. But I will also say this. I, I have to tell you this. I'll be in Chicago, so there will be people I know and friends I know and people who want to hang out and go out and do stuff. Um and I'm not trying to act like a big celebrity. I'm just saying it's I'll be home for the first time doing a show in Chicago in, in probably like six years. So it'll be cool. And a bunch of people always come to see Lenny. So I'm sure some of them will want to talk to me. And uh, and if you guys are in from out of town, I, I'm <laughs> I don't want to leave you in a lurch. I don't want I don't want someone to go. Hey, man, I drove all the way from fucking Florida. And, I, you know, I I get it. But what I'm saying is if you can come out for the shows, that'd be cool. And I'll be all about hanging out. But uh, but my time will be parceled out somehow. And, and I know this sounds stupid because I, it's just, I feel if you're making a long trip, I will do everything I can to make every effort I can to hang out with you and, and see you. Uh, but during the day, you know, that's not going to work. Uh, cause I'll be with David and we'll be working too. Cause we're going to do stuff for the show. Uh, regardless, anyway, July 8th, 9th and 10th at the Rosemont Zanies in Rosemont, Illinois, uh, tickets are probably on sale now, but if they're not, like I said, hang tight. I'll be plugging this every goddamn week and it'll be me and Lenny and it should be fun. I'm excited. Um, 
Did you know I'm part of the Misfit Toys Co-op? Well, you're goddamn right I am, even though I haven't recorded any drops for them, and I should. But I haven't. Uh, but there are plenty of people involved. Never Not Funny with our great friends Jimmy and Matt and Elliot and Garen. Doug Loves Movies with Doug Benson. The Todd Glass Show with Todd Glass. No Fun with Jen Kirkman with Jen Kirkman. And, of course, Let Me Watch Your Movie with You with Jonah Ray. These are the uh, the five heavy hitters part of the M- M- Misfit Toys Co-op. I'm in there as well, uh, but I don't need to plug myself, right? You're already here. Fuck, you already listened to this goddamn thing. Uh, Never Not Funny, Doug Loves Movies, Todd Glass Show. No Fun with Jen Kirkman and Let Me Watch Your Movie with You, Jonah Ray. All available right now wherever your finer podcasts can be downloaded. Go ahead and check it out, please. The Misfit Toys Co-op bringing you the finest in entertainment for as long as you'll let us. Uh, and I said sponsors. Well, holy Christ, they can't forget about the Paranoid Strain. That's a podcast that everybody in the world loves, right? That's uh, our great friend, Fearful Jesuit, taking care of business, bringing you all of the conspiracies, series, breaking them down. It's conspiracy theories, not series, conspiracy theories. It's hard for me to say with my lisp. And uh, God, I wish I didn't have a lisp, but I do. Uh, archive episode 17, part seven went up on Monday. And uh, and and going forward from now on, guys, it's going to be new goddamn content from our friends at the Paranoid Strain. You can download it right now. Go to the iTunes store, the Apple podcast space. It's available for you to check out and get a hold of this second right now. Fearful Jesuit and the monks and Dana Unicorn, they're drawing ships on grains of rice. And then the recording shows destroying conspiracy theories tearing asunder all of these people and their nonsense that comes out of their mouths. And uh, and the new stuff starts to hit the way. I, I think probably this Monday, I would imagine, which would be tomorrow, I would assume. Um, but you'll want to check it out because it's fantastic work. I mean, Fearful Jesuit, again, you got me. I'm talking about the Snyder Cut and Circles. Uh, but our great friend Fearful Jesuit has a show that is scripted and well done and and uh, and lands punches and bombs. And Dana Unicorn is right there. She's got the iron fist and the velvet glove. Just the two of them taking on conspiracy theories and all these other idiots that are ruining the world. It's a uh, it's a hell of a listen. So go ahead and check out the Paranoid Strain podcast available right now in the iTunes store or in the Apple podcast space or possibly at Stitcher, wherever you're going to find podcasts. Just go ahead and put in Paranoid Strain. You'll find it fearful jesuit is there you can actually leave a review of it if you want to in the itunes store and uh and talk about how great it is you can mention me if you want why not you can write fearful jesuit a note here's his email address the paranoid strain at gmail.com the paranoid strain at gmail.com go ahead and check it out now it's uh an email that you should be sending right now to tell him how much you love him you love the show you love dana tell him uh thank him for involving me and supporting this show and then we can go ahead and scratch each other's back and it's totally fun be be sure you include all of this in your email i don't know why you would but go ahead um and check it out man and leave a review and tell him he's great and tell your friends and download all the past episodes and listen to those and get ready for the new content because it's going to fucking blow you away he just does such great work at the Paranoid Strain Podcast. My great friend, Fearful Jesuit, is waiting to be downloaded and emailed. Please take care of that right now. The Paranoid Strain Podcast in the iTunes store, the Apple Podcast space, and wherever finer podcasts are there for you. For you. Um, <laughs> you want to hire me for cameo? Sure you do. Why wouldn't you, right? It's uh, Easter's coming up. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about rabbits. I'll talk about Jesus and Good Friday. Whatever you need from me, I can do it. Hire me for Cameo. The, uh, it's the bookcameo.com on your computer or the Cameo app that you can download to your phone. And you can hire me to, do, uh, to tell your friends and your neighbors and whomever else that you want to tell them good things. Why not? Um, you can support this show financially many different ways, not just Cameo. If you hire me, you know, I get 15 bucks out of my 20 or no, right? 15 out of my 20. Yeah, 15 out of my $20 fee goes to me five goes to cameo so thank you for thinking of me and hiring me to do that but there's other ways you can support financially as well you can go to my mike website which i absolutely need to start tinkering with and in the upper right hand corner of uh of every page well most of the pages you're going to see a little horn boy there and it says donate you click on that and it takes you right to the paypal where you can send a one-time donation or you can subscribe monthly Whatever you think would be cool to do via the uh, PayPal, however you feel comfortable doing it. You want to send me a monthly stipend? You want to send me a, just a windfall? <laughs> I could use it. 
Go to uh, MikeSchmidtComedy.com. Go to the upper right-hand corner of virtually every page. Click on the little horn boy, and it'll take you right to PayPal, and you can support this show financially that way, and I appreciate it very much. You can also support this show by becoming a patron at Patreon. Patreon.com slash Mike40YOB. Patreon.com slash Mike40YOB. Go ahead and become a patron over there. Uh, it supports the show. It helps me out immeasurably. It keeps me afloat. And uh, and like I said, I want to get on the road. This will go a long way toward getting me on the road and being able to book theaters. And any revenue that I can generate is going to, you know, obviously I got to stay alive and pay bills. But if I can step it up, I can really start regenerating it back into the show and booking shows and going out and doing stuff. And uh, and that would be super great. Something I would really like. So if you can support the show financially, do so, please. Go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com and click on the little horn boy in the upper right-hand corner to help via PayPal or... Uh, better yet, go to patreon.com slash Mike four zero Y O B become a patron of the show and, and help us out because that would help us out financially in a way where I can go ahead and start traveling and coming out to see you guys and thanking you all personally. That'd be cool. I would love it. I've got channels too, that you can use to support the show. YouTube.com slash the 40 year old boy. Uh, you know, again, I always mention grandiose plans and who knows streams, whatever we're thinking about, but youtube.com slash the 40 year old boy. If you can become a person who is uh, subscribed at least to the channel. That would be great. If you want to check out old podcasts, you can, but subscribe to the channel. That would help. And then also twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. Now this is a place where you can really help financially twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. You can follow and subscribe over there. Following is one thing, but subscribing, you can actually use your Amazon prime and it gets me $5 a month. It doesn't cost you anything. Bezos just gives me the five. You're nice to think of me if you do that, or you yourself can come and subscribe. There's a tier one, a tier two, and a tier three. There's uh, different amounts. You get little emojis there. If you subscribe, it's pretty sweet. Twitch.tv slash the 40-year-old boy. Come and watch me play games, video games. I wind up talking up top and doing a lot of yap yap, and then I'll wind up doing taste tests for weird food, and then we'll go out and play games, sometimes puzzles, sometimes swords. I'm looking for a new scary game to play, whatever. It's fun. You get to see me. You like hearing me? You'll get to see me. You want to put a face to this voice? Of course you do, for God's sakes. So go ahead and sign up at twitch.tv slash the 40-year-old boy to follow or subscribe. Now, I will tell you this. You don't need to follow or subscribe in order to tune in. I mean, you can just pop in and watch me play games and talk in the stream with people. And right now, there's a bunch of clips you can go watch, old, uh, like older shows that you can see. So you can get a general idea of what it is, of me shouting into a camera and playing games and stuff. It's pretty sweet. So go ahead and become a follower or a subscriber at twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy i'm playing usually every weekday uh like at four o'clock when i'm going i'm going out of town uh when i'm out of town i won't be playing games whatever we'll figure it out go ahead and become a twitch subscriber and you'll find me and you'll love me it'll be great won't you love me won't it be the best i because i just want to fucking burst out man i'm excited to go to denver i'm excited to go watch some baseball watch some basketball hang out with my buddy dennis he wrote me a note he's like hey man what kind of like snacks do you want in the house because uh, I have to do a baseball draft while I'm there, unfortunately. Um, I, I kind of scheduled the trip. I was so excited, and I, I totally spaced out that the, the fucking baseball draft was that Saturday. So I have to do a baseball draft at his house, which is fine. But then he's like, hey, man, we'll just go. Me and Jeff will go watch games and stuff, and then you, whatever you want like to eat, I'll leave in the house. And so I feel so stupid because I wrote him a note. He's like, what do you want to eat? I'm like, well, you know, I don't need all of this stuff. <laughs> if you don't want to get this, I totally understand, but you're asking, so I'm going to tell you. And I said, I just wrote like some Lay's sour cream and onion chips, possibly some Tostitos, uh, possibly some uh, like rye bread, some uh, uh, maple honey ham or some turkey, some Munster cheese, some sweet pickles, some mayonnaise, <laughs> a 12 pack of Coke. I am, you know, I've become, I've become like the, the uncle who visits that has very specific coffee he has to drink or he's going to bitch about it all goddamn day long. I mean, it's just, because look, I'm not going to freak out, but I even wrote him, I was like, get mayo. And I said, and do me a favor, get some regular mayo because like vegan mayo and healthy mayo is, is a, kind of off-putting. And it just is. I've had avocado oil mayo and I wanted to throw it off of a fucking rooftop. I mean, it's just so bad. Give me the fucking fat stuff. That's what I want. I want Hellman's mayonnaise or, or you know what? Get me best foods mayonnaise west of the Rockies. I don't know where he is in Denver. He might be west of the Rockies. He might not be. Regardless, get that mayo. 
uh, get some mustard, get some mustard, get some mayo stirred, whatever the fuck mayo chip. I don't care. Something with a brand name. Cause I'll go to people's houses and they'll be just like, here, what we got, we got Mayo. And it's like with an A instead of an, or an I instead of an A. <laughs> like, I'm like, wait, what? Mayo. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of, it means it's like a millisecond away from being actual Mayo. And I'm like, Oh, oh fuck. Um, but it felt stupid asking for all that stuff, you know, but, but I mean, you know, again, like I said, I love fucking food and I feel like it's such an idiot when people ask me, cause I'm like, no, get this or get that. And I have specific brands and shit. And I'm, I'm just so, I'm so excited to go places and order food. Like Lenny and I, I picked Lenny up at the fucking airport and I'm driving him home and he's like, uh, Hey, do you want to get some lunch? And I'm like, yeah, where do you want to go? And he's like, I don't care. Where do you want to go? And I'm like, dude, I've got a list of like a million places on the way home. Like, do you time you got to be home? And he's like, well, I got to be here by five. And I picked him up at like one thirty or one o'clock. And I was like, all right. I go, we can actually go downtown if you want, but if there's places around here on the West side, we can go to, there's a barbecue place. I like there's uh, you know, I, I mentioned these places I go and he's like, all right, let's go to the barbecue joint. I go, cool. So then I'm driving and then I, I we start talking and I go, Oh, wait a minute. What about ramen? He goes, Oh man, I love ramen. I go, there's a place called Daiko Kuya. It's right in fucking West Hollywood. He goes, great. Put it in. So I was switching my app to, <laughs> on the phone from slab barbecue to Daiko Kuya ramen and I set it up and as I'm driving, I look and there's a food truck parked alongside the road and it says Marisco's Jalisco. And I go, dude, that's a famous food truck. He goes, is it? I go, yeah. I go, I've been trying to find that truck forever. And I immediately pulled over. He goes, what are you doing? I go, we're having a fucking shrimp taco on our way to lunch. He goes, all right, man, I'm in because I'm the fattest man alive. So we went over to Marisco's Jalisco and I said, and they had a. Uh, uh, like a, a mixta, which was with had fucking ceviche with shrimp and octopus and actual fish off a truck. Dude, I'm eating octopus off a goddamn truck. Do you know how much I love Los Angeles? Oh, my Christ. Octopus off a fucking truck. So I ordered that, and they're known for their shrimp tacos. So I said, well, all right, well, it's our first time here, so I definitely want to try a shrimp taco. And they go, well, we'll tell you what. We'll give you a free one, and you can buy one because this is what we're known for, and I guarantee you when you eat it, you're going to want a second one. We're like, that's fucking amazing. Thank you so much. So then they had an aqua dolce, or agua dolce, which is like super hot with habanero. I ordered one of those. Lenny ordered one of those, and I ordered this fucking ceviche with the octopus. We each got a two tacos, and uh, we... <laughs> We ate the tacos by the truck or one of the taco. Each of us ate a taco. And then we had this carry out food and we were still going to lunch. So like we put all this seafood in my car and then we go to drive and I turn on third street and I'm like, all right, slabs up here. And then as I'm driving up third street, I remember a place on third street called son of a gun. Remember how I love animal? Well, son of a gun is like the seafood version of animal. So I go, Oh my God, son of a gun is on this street. I go, you ever go to son of a gun? He's like, no, I go, Holy fuck. Google it. See if it's open. So he Googled it. He goes, it says they're open. And we pulled up and I could see there were people eating. And I'm like, holy fuck. And now look, I have not been to a restaurant since all this bullshit started. I pick stuff up and I leave, but I've never sat anywhere. Okay. But I, you know, I got half the vaccine, so I'm feeling fucking lucky. So I'm like, all right, man, let's do it. So I missed it. So I turned around the block. I got a parking spot right in front. We get out and I go to the podium and there's people there, you know, there's like a couple that's sitting there behind plexiglass. It's great. You're just, you're sitting behind fucking bulletproof plexiglass. You feel like Batman or something. And, uh, and there's a couple and they're eating. And then there's a guy who's solo. And then we sit six feet away from them. And Lenny and I sit down and the guy brings the menu and, and he's like, Hey guys, you know, what are you, what are you thinking? And we're like, well, we're starving. And I go, and I haven't been here in a while. And, uh, and he's got a mask on. I got a mask on. And I look at him and I go, look, I got to ask you a question. I go, this is my first time in a restaurant since all the bullshit. Are you mad that we're here? He goes, what do you mean? I go, well, look, are you mad? Like, is this a drag? Should we take our food to go? He goes, absolutely not. No, enjoy yourself. I go, you sure? And he goes, yeah, man, it's no problem. I go, okay, I just want to make sure because I, I hear horror stories that like waiters are forced to go back to work because otherwise they're going to be kicked out of their houses. And now I want to make sure that I'm not forcing you to do something that you don't want to do. And he's, he's laughing and he's like, no, dude, it's totally fine. And I'm like, what a scramble head. Why am I bothering this guy with this nonsense? My nonsense. So he splits, we get the menu and Lenny and I start looking. He's like, what do you think? And I go, well, I don't know. I, you know, we can, cause it's uh it's all plates. You know what I mean? It's, it's not. Uh, it's just, it's just plates of stuff. So he's like, all right. I go, well, why don't we just get a bunch of stuff and split it? He goes, cool. I go, what are you thinking? And he goes, well, I'm looking at this big eye tuna and it was, uh, it was big eye tuna with avocado and crispy tortillas. And it was wrapped in a fucking, like, uh, in a, in a soft tortilla. 
with uh, with like what they called like tiger milk sauce, leche de tigre or whatever. Uh, so he's like, yeah, I'm thinking about that. And he goes, you know what? And also they got ribs. I go, well, look, let me talk to the, uh, the guy. So he comes back and I go, um, first of all, we're going to get the smoked mahi dip because there was a smoked mahi dip that came with crackers. And uh, because that was the thing that was in my brain, I was like, holy fuck, dude, smoked mahi dip with celery and radish and crackers. So I go, can we start with the mahi dip? And then we're still deciding. He goes, yes. And I go, let me ask you a question. My buddy here, uh, he wants to get ribs. And uh, he goes, okay. I go, but I have to ask you, it's a seafood place. And like, oftentimes I would go with my wife to a steakhouse and she'd order the salmon. I'd be like, what the hell? So do we have to get fish? He's like, no, man, the ribs are amazing. I go, you sure? He goes, oh yeah, no, they're like, they're smoked. And they got like a pineapple glaze on them with chili and soy. He goes, they're great. And I go, cool. All right, well, we're still deciding. And he goes, okay, I'll get your mahi dip. So he goes to get us the mahi dip. And Lenny's like, I go, well, I go, they had lobster rolls, which were like twelve fifty each, but I knew they were really small. Um, and we're going back and forth. He's like, well, I like this idea of this broccoli. This sounds pretty good with the quinoa. And I go, cool. He goes, all right, so I'm going to get the broccoli with the quinoa, and I'm going to get the ribs, and I'm going to get the big eye tuna. He goes, what do you get? And I go, all right, well, I'll get the lobster BLT with the bacon and the potato, the homemade potato chips. And um, you know what? Uh, they... They got fish and chips. And if you, I love fish and chips. I'm going to get the fish and chips. And then I'll probably get the, uh, oh my God, they got ham. You know what? They get this thing. It's called country ham with honey butter and hush puppies. So let's fucking get that. That sounds good, right? And he goes, oh my God, yes. I go, cool. Now, should we also get like the caramelized onion dip? And he's like, I don't know. Um, we're already going to need to have to go find gold bullion to pay for this lunch as it is. And I'm like, you're exactly right. But it's because we were so fucking excited to order food. And we ordered like kings. Like we just fucking were ordering all this food. And the guy's like, I'm going to stagger this. He goes, and I go, all right, it's a lot of food, right? He goes, oh my God. Yeah, it's a lot of food. He goes, but you know what? I bet you guys can fucking take it apart. He didn't say fucking, but I'm like, all right, cool. And so he just, he starts bringing the food. He brings the the big eye tuna first. And we're like, oh my God. It's just, it just looks like a fucking, like a hacky sack filled with the best tuna you've ever had. It's so good. He brings this and that. And then he goes, I should tell you this. He brings the dishes out. And uh, every time he's coming out, I'm putting my mask on. And like the fourth time he comes out, I go, I go, Hey, I have a question. He goes, what is it? I go, we are, we're eating with our masks off. I go, do I have to put my mask on every time you come back to the table? He goes, absolutely not. I go, you're sure. He goes, yeah. He goes, I have a mask on, so I'm fine. I go, well, look, I have half the vaccine. He has half the vaccine. So we're kind of okay. I go, but at the same time, I want you to feel safe. I don't want you to be bummed or whatever. So I want to make sure that you're cool with us. And he goes, he starts laughing again. He's like, listen, you be comfortable. Whatever you want to do is totally fine. I said, okay, I go, now I got to be honest. I may put the mask back on anyway, because I might be uncomfortable. I go, or I may just forget myself and put the mask on. Cause I've been so used to putting a mask on for a year. And he's like, it's fine. I go, okay, cool. So then he just brings the food and Lenny and I were sitting outside and I got to be, it, it, it felt, it felt so fucking amazing because it also felt weird. It felt really weird, but it was so exciting to be in a restaurant where I talked to a guy and he brought me food and he brought me great food and Letty and I just kept ordering stuff and it kept coming and we ate it and we couldn't finish it. And the, even the waiters is like, man, I thought for sure you guys were going to finish it all. I'm like, are you kidding me, man? That was ridiculous. That was a tsunami of food. Uh, and then he had to bring two bags and we split it and we're putting it together. And I, but, but God damn, it was joyous. It was so fucking joyous to be in a restaurant and on the street with cars driving by even, even because we were right on the street. I mean, even if I'm eating country ham with fucking Valvoline fumes, I was fine with it because it was just worth it to be outside with noise, with people, you know, kind of girl watching as they walked by, kind of people watching as they went by talking to Lenny about it, just seeing different. Oh my God, dude, it was, it was phenomenal. I can't wait until it all starts to open up again and we can all get back outside and we can all start going places and hanging out and seeing one another, whether it's in clubs or at fucking food places or just in houses. Now, now I don't know if I want to do a house for a while. I mean, I kind of do because I, I enjoy sitting, but at the same fucking time, dude, just going anywhere, a concert or a movie or just a fucking another restaurant, anything to get me out the goddamn door. I just want to be out there fucking seeing people and making that eye contact. I can't wait to make eye contact with people like, isn't this fucking great? This is great. Isn't this the fucking best movies and concerts and libraries and fucking whatever, just a grocery store. I don't fucking care. Just that relief to get the yoke of sadness, the patina of malaise off this entire fucking country of people who've been trying to do what we can. Some people have 
some people haven't, but it doesn't matter. It's just been, it wore you down either way, whether you were fighting for your right to be fucking, uh, don't tread on me or whether you were like fucking wear a mask and don't kill anybody. It's still been bullshit and it's fucked us all up, man, for so goddamn long. And to know now we're getting so close. We're getting, we're at the fucking like 15 yard line. We just got to figure out a way to punch it into the fucking end zone and get everybody this goddamn medicine and everybody just calm the fuck down and fucking realize that this is going to be so great when we can just fucking head out and look at one another and fucking high five and hug and fuck and every other goddamn thing we need to do, man. Just fucking we're human. Let's be human again. Let's get out and be fucking humans. Whether we're talking or staring or looking or whatever the fuck, eating or anything at all, let's just do it and do it together and fucking be happy. Smile and laugh and be everything. Anything I like more than me It's people who like me I love me But if you love me I love you Cause you know why We both love me How great am I Let's talk about that for a while And by a while I mean forever Podcast! Podcast!